might want to make a list of the spells. So with any luck, the first thing you heard was, um, you might want to make a list of the spells. <laughs> what? Welcome to oh, the later. stream. We'll, uh, we'll get ourselves started here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Sorry about whatever technical issues we may or may not have been dealing with. Uh, streaming is a tra challenge. Have we started the recording yet? I did. Okay, good. good. We got we have, all of that. We have backup audio recording. Had. We're recording the video locally. Uh, welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a uh, homebrew home game for D and D, uh, where we decide to expose the world of our silliness. I suppose you might say, uh, and have a lot of fun in this strange world. Uh, we are trying to do the Twitch streaming thing. We're having a bit of an issue there, so um, normally you'll be able to find this at twitch.tv slash ncaf1, I think. I should probably verify all these links before I tell you what they are. Uh, similarly, over at youtube.com slash ncaf1, you'll find an archive of these episodes, hopefully correctly encoded and sized for your viewing pleasure. Uh, I'm the uh, GM and I guess host of this crazy madness. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. i move over to a different screen here, getting all fancy today, uh, to, to show you the rest of the crowd that we have with us. Uh, going around the table, uh, starting this time from my right, let's start there. I'm Pat. Uh, I play Emrin Elisar, the uh, social justice cleric who's currently stuck in the middle of a snowy cold land. Hey, I'm Nax. I play Zakis, half elf wizard, librarian, and I don't know, teleportation circle builder. <laughs> Versatile, I guess. Sure, okay. Uh, I'm Murray. I play Elzara, the uh, wood elf druid, and I am Invitor, finally. I can do things with at least these two people. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jody. Uh, I'll be playing Clark today, as usual. The fighter rogue who happens to be a half orc, and uh, he's, I believe, unconscious. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> well, uh, as we left last session, timey wimey wibbly wobbly, uh, we'll have to catch up on that. But I believe before we get started, Marie, you had something you wanted to say? Yes. Uh, this weekend we went to East Coast Comic Expo, and Nax and I actually got you something to thank you for all the work you put into making this game happen for the past okay. year. Okay. Now um, I'm uh, worried. Yeah. <laughs> Um, these characters wouldn't exist if you hadn't started this game. So we think you should have the first official print of our oh cosplays. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Nice. The Holy feels. Crap. <laughs> there will be more pictures, and yeah. this picture will be posted on the uh, Facebook so, page when we get them. So this is what two of my characters, or my players, have done. <laughs> I'll switch back to the other screen here just to make it a little bit bigger. I can see my cursor. <laughs> um, this is uh, two of my players who decided to cosplay as their characters this weekend. I didn't realize I had seen some of the pictures of, of your cosplay, and I'd seen your face, but and the ears, but I didn't realize you did the rest. And uh, yeah, this is uh, wow. This is kind nice. of amazing. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank uh, you. <laughs> DM stymied for D four rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Level up. It, uh, it's been a year and a half, and like as I said, these characters wouldn't exist, and those cosplays wouldn't exist if we weren't here. So. Well, that's, um, that's very generous. Thank you very much. Uh, yep. Wow. The, the fun of these games for me is that we do create things that never existed before, and uh, you guys are an integral part of that. I'm just the tapestry builder who's desperately trying to keep the tapestry up to date while you guys wander around the universe. <laughs> hey, you, uh, let, you let us mess around in your world, then that's fine. <laughs> keep messing up my world. I have to clean it up <laughs> afterwards. It's, it's, it's <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm very touched. Uh, I'm going to try not to blubber through the rest of the stream here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, with that, uh, is there anything else that I should be worried about going on here? Sorry, uh, I didn't mention anything. Well, <laughs> I formed a cult in your name. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, that happens from time to time. So, with that, why don't we uh, get started uh, with a bit of a, a bit of a recap. I'm desperately trying to get these shorter, which means it was longer than last week's. Uh, as we left it, all of our characters are still experiencing this weird time thing. Well, actually, the players are experiencing a weird time thing. As we slowly bring to close a few extra sessions of downtime than I had originally planned, as someone pointed out earlier, uh, where we are having the characters slowly converging back on the city of Vatur where for most of the group, that's actually where it began, although Clark himself 
came from uh, the southern city of Aquain. It has been a long and arduous winter, and that winter has been causing numerous problems throughout the island of Vatur, as well as uh, Bendra to the south, and to some degree islands to the north as well, um, but not uh, as extensively as perhaps you might have thought. There's still word that the open sea below with many of the islands is still free. Aquain itself seems to be uh, an ice-locked harbor, although there's much effort right now to try to clear that out. Uh, to the north, the snow uh, has basically isolated the tour almost entirely. We'll find out at least one route which has become free. In the previous episode, Zack has continued his studies until Vrinwick suddenly came to find him. There was something happening in the teleportation circle that he had rebuilt. A portal was forming, although slowly. He quickly rushed to the hidden room to find Nala already waiting, and the three of them witnessed a portal flex into being. Out of it, a gnarled, large, greenish, taloned hand thrust outward, and then quickly withdrew. Before they could react, falling out of the portal came an old elf, with clothing burned and tattered, hair askew, his entire right arm missing at the shoulder. Although in a terrible state, the three quickly recognized Imral Amakir. With Adrian's assistance, Imral is brought to his office, where he teleports away immediately after searching for his own shells for something. Although he has returned... It is believed that he went to the nearby temple of Damasini to recover. Before he had a chance to say much at all. Was that Vrinwick or...? That was uh, Imral. Okay. Because I don't remember that part. Uh, Amrun made his journey with a large caravan southward towards the Serene Temple in Aquain. After... And Aquain, I should say. The Serene Temple's not in Aquain. After making a dangerous arrangement, the offer of safety from the severe winter cold in exchange for concealing the identity of Matron Horfrost for a complete year. Details are a little more picky than that. With an innovative snowplow attached to numerous horses at the head of a caravan, Amrun's caravan pushed through the snow-buried road from Vatur to Rackdale, only to discover another challenge, the frozen-over, non-traversable Bargeport Bridge. With help from a local Ignean flamekeeper and dozens of people, both from the caravan and local citizens, a pathway over the bridge was carved, allowing entry into the high, frozen wasteland of the Bendron Steps. From there, the travel was easier, but the cold threatened them constantly, or would have if the bargain with Horfrost did not keep them from freezing. After a brief stop at the waters of Marius, where several of the fleeing merchants and nobles decided to leave the caravan, the group pushed on, nearly reaching the Serene Temple before being confronted by a familiar storm that had so far kept to the horizons. From the storm came a solitary shadow speaker centaur, a deep midnight-colored warrior whom Amrun had met before. The centaur presented herself to Amrun and told him that she, Iro, was to be taught his ways, as ordered by their chief seer. He agreed, but would collect her on the return trip from Aquain. Meanwhile, Elzera talked with Par the Gardener about harvesting the underground early crop they had ready, and how they were going to take it to Vatur. She began a spell to increase the harvest, something which takes a considerable time to finish, when her shadow flowed down through the sunlight diffusing crystals above the main cavern and coalesced in the shape of a woman, tall and horned, right in front of her. The woman taunted Elzera, distracting her from her spell and telling her how the druids were going to suffer the wrath of the wild hunt. Intriguingly, the shadow woman referred to Elzera as kin. Driven away, it left Elzera with the feeling that danger was imminent and that the harvest must travel as soon as possible. With her and cautious help as guardians, the harvest is brought to Vatur on the newly plowed roads. And finally... Clark, somewhat slightly in the future as far as our timeline goes, but we'll catch up to that in a moment. Clark confronted Bazo the Sage about the disconnected jobs he'd been given to discover the clues that led him directly to confront the out-of-place Peter Cantor, head assistant to Council Member Woodcomb. The confrontation revealed that Peter had allies, and in dramatic final stand in front of the gates of the Great Library, and the biggest revelation was laid bare. Peter had been replaced by a changeling. That is where we left off. We will move slightly backward in time to Zacchaeus. Yay. In the moments just following mm. the disappearance of Imral Amakir once more. Nala swearing loudly, not necessarily to anybody else, but also with a familiarity. Um, 
Not that she didn't expect this in some ways from Imeril, who tends to do, go off suddenly. Hopefully he doesn't go off into some other dimension and get himself killed. <laughs> He'll be recovering. That's Rinwick speaking. How well do you know him? You seem to know him very well. Or I don't remember, but I trust him. Mm -hmm. I think I've had a few things removed, not just gems from time to time. It's probably safer that way that I don't know. There may be a way to recover this, but that's another topic for another time. Uh, I'm not so you... sure it would be a good idea. I'm not so sure I'd know. I'd like to know who I am. Well, I'm sure the rest of us would. In really? any case, uh, can you... No offense to you, Mr. Brightrock, uh, but Brynwick, could you ascertain that Adrian is who he is? Y you said you've spotted doppelgangers before. I have. Can you tell if Adrian is himself? Obviously, we can't have everybody I mean, knowing I about this television. I spotted them trouble. mostly by figuring out that they weren't the same people all the time. I followed them for sometimes weeks to figure out who was who. Some of them I've been able to spot a little closer than others. When he pulls out a blade, uh, kind of almost from nowhere. A small blade, size to him. Vrinwick being a halfling, after all. Covered still in these gems, and you see a couple of them start to glow and pulse slightly as he approaches Adrian. Adrian looks, uh, first of all, somewhat recovering now from the bewilderment of both seeing Imral Emicure and then seeing him vanish suddenly, uh, looks at the both of you with suspicion. And how do I know that you aren't, aren't uh, uh, changelings after all? Well, after... I was still in my office because I didn't have an escort to come out, but you, all three of you, in fact, ran separately. Well, this... whatever test Vrinwick does on you, he can do on all of us afterwards. Well, how do I know that he is in line? Renwick's like, he's kind of got a point. Although most of the change thing, I think, would be unable to replicate my sparkling. Exactly. Personality, I mean. <laughs> As he kind of winks. Well, what test do you propose? Says Adrian. And Renwick's, well, there's the cut test. The cut test? Yes. Everything bleeds. Well, almost everything. They bleed a different color. Sometimes. It's not perfect. It depends on what they're cut with and how calm they are. Right. The and Adrian calm. starts to protest when Vrinwick whips the dagger at him. Uh, let's see how well Vrinwick... Natural 20. <laughs> so, Vrinwick whips the dagger at Adrian as he's kind of flustered and, and going, but wait a minute, what are you going to do? <laughs> Fuck! And it hits him squarely in the, in the chest. Uh, Adrian, still kind of bewildered, looks down at the uh, the dagger and you see Vrenwick take two large steps and leap upward, grab onto the dagger handle, again, still before uh, before Adrian can even react and just pulls it back out and you see a bit of spray of, of red blood as he pulls it out and Adrian just sort of ow! And bends forward a bit. Can I do a medicine uh, check on Adrian? <laughs> uh, you certainly can. Uh, and is the blood a normal color? Uh, the blood appears to be a, a normal color. So uh, I guess I punch him in the shoulder because I rolled you a get? one. Oh my god, blood! Faint. What, what did you roll? One. I rolled a one. Okay. Uh, you go <laughs> over and, one. Great and way to start. <laughs> the small size of the blade actually makes it hard to find. It, it cut in between the normal armor that uh, Emer that, uh, Emer that Adrian wears. And Amarun also dies for some reason. No. Uh, and and so you're actually kind of having a hard time picking out the wound around the, the armor. And you're kind of pulling at the armor, which is, he just sort of winces. Hey, uh, cut it out. I read about this in a book. I'm sorry. But uh, and he's, you he's can do the test on me next if you want. Holding just his shoulder. You see, you see Renrik passing the, the blade over a couple of the, the stones. And you see them kind of uh, pulse and then go dark. Uh he reaches up, kind of puts his tongue to the blade. Oh yeah, that's that's terrible. But I think that's terrible, Adrian, or, or terrible changeling. I think he tastes like a human, so I guess that's not changeling. Okay. Um, he kind of looks around and goes over to the curtain, I'll take cleans <laughs> the blade off. Does it have to be that blade specifically? Uh, this one? No. Okay. It I, could be. Because I have like a pocket knife in my stuff, so I'll just. This one, as he kind of reaches underneath and whips one back at you. What's your AC? I don't, I don't think I have major armor on right now, so 11. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you, you hear him finish the sentence as the blades come spinning spinning out at you. 
uh, and catches you in the arm. It wasn't a natural 20 this time, at least. I said I had one! (sighs) Can I pull it out myself? Uh, You can. Uh, Do you have to pull this out, or can I do it myself? uh, I can do it. And he kind of puts the blade away. Uh, You might want to sit down for this. Or kneel down. I'll sit on whatever chair is. Okay, there's, a, there's, there's the meeting chairs, yeah. the guest chairs that are there. You kind of sit down, and he kind of reaches over. And I give him a weird look. Uh, he, just, he just kind of winks at you when he, when he pulls the blade, and you can see him kind of carefully pulling it out. You don't even feel the blade come out. Again, another one of these very small blades. Um, once again, waves it over a couple of the, uh, the gems that once again go bright and then go dark again. Uh, and then the taste test. Yeah. Was your mother an elf or your father? Father. Yeah, figures. Well, both of you are, are, are both of your parents would be proud that you're not a changeling. And once again, goes over Good. to the I knew to that. the uh, uh, curtain to uh, clean off the blade. Nala's looking very suspicious at this point, and you can see that she's kind of tensing up a little bit. Doesn't hurt that bad. Seriously. My apologies for going out of universe for a moment, but I watched The Tick recently, and this is really reminding me of the... It's like it was he was looking for a place to stick, uh, to hold his knife. <laughs> Anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to stabbing people. Back to stabbing people. Uh, Nala's now looking very wary at this, uh, at this exchange. Uh, you can see her uh, looking like she's about to cast a spell, possibly in reaction. Uh, but Vrinwick's calmly uh, cleaning the blade over there. Um, I will do it myself. And she holds out her hand, and her her, her uh, claw, which you you've noticed before, but she never really flexes a little bit. This time you can see that it's very very sharp, and she draws a line down her her uh, her rough scaled palm, and there's a bit of of blood that's left behind. It's not red blood. Okay. Um, the uh, dragonborn have a slightly well, it depends on which kind they are, but hers would be a slightly darker green actually okay. in her case. Um, and she holds out her palm. Uh, Bruno comes over. You can see that he kind of reaches over and he actually puts his hand, hands on her palm. His hands are considerably smaller, but he presses in with his thumbs. You see Nala uh, uh, jolt a little bit as he pulls the wound open. And you can see him kind of inspecting. Okay, this looks real. Hold it right there. And this time he kind of takes the back of his arm and waves it over. Okay, you seem to be fine. Good. I could have told you that. <laughs> Yes, well, now everybody knows that everybody's fine. Because we do have to keep this teleportation circle a secret. You're going to be a pretty valuable person around here, Vrenwick, if uh, if you can pull off that trick on a regular basis. Not that I want you to go around stabbing my guards or anybody else around here, but... Well, if they get consent, I'm sure it could be arranged. Uh, it, it takes a little bit out of me, and I can't do it all the time. Uh, these things are a little finicky. But from all I could tell, um, you are who you claim to be. Yes. Uh, any idea where Emerald might have gone? I presume he went to the, the temple nearby. He has a thing for the Namazanines. Uh, apparently he got to go way back. Hmm. He looked pretty bad, though. Yes. The arm... He wasn't missing the arm when I saw him. He was in a cage, you know, he was being tortured, but... By who? Um, or by what? A Something well, you red said a green skinned arm. creature of some kind. Red skinned creature. Um, about, I don't know, a little taller than you, maybe? Large black wings. I think he had horns, although I didn't really look that closely at him. A whole bunch of other things around him. Uh, demons, I suspect. We'll have to discuss this again later. I have a book about demons. No, no, no spells included, but it's more of a guide. Okay. It's from Helen. You go find your your guidebook. Take it out of my bag. It's right here. But for later. Uh, Adrian and Nala both look look a little alarmed that you pull a supposed guide to demons that you carry around with you. Uh, well, there, like I said, there is no dark magic that can come from this. It's only for information. Uh, can I see that book? Yes. Says Nala. They, they must return to me. She so burned, I'll let her like flip she through. She burns it. <laughs> I'll let her look through the pages to see like there's nothing wrong. So perhaps we can identify or I need to see it. Are there pictures are there pictures in the book? Uh which book is that, uh, do you recall? Elwyn's Guide to Demons, both useful and not. Oh uh, yes. Um I can actually look that up. Because I mean I could look up 
the green arm coming out, is that represented in this book? Or the black uh, things? Yes, this was one that was beautifully illustrated. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and only on Discovery did you kind of realize that the illustrations themselves were hiding different elements. That's all the demonic uh, actual language and all the demonic um, uh, names and things were hidden within those. Okay. Um, I've never seen this book. I picked it up in a, I believe, some pocket dimension, perhaps the Feywild. Mm -hmm. We uh, battled a hag. She had her own little dimension. This is one of the many books that were there, but few that were recovered. Is this I book in the catalog? Soon. Hmm. Adrian looks kind of not happy with that answer. But perhaps, Vernwick, it's beautifully il illustrated, perhaps Vernwick could identify what we're up against. So I'll plop the book down for all to see. Okay. Um, so I'll ask Vernwick, anything you recognize? I'll oh. flip to whatever's read. He starts flipping through rings. the book and, and it's like, oh... Yeah, this one's really ugly. Uh, Split her face. I don't think that's something I saw. Uh, saw something of these, and he, he points to what are look like kind of uh, large toad-like beings. You actually fought one of these before, um, you know, known as a Hezru, okay. um, which is the thing that the hag had summoned. Mm. Uh, there were a lot of these running around. Hezrus. Okay. They tended to avoid them. They tended to be pretty awful. And yes, it smelled terrible. We faced one. It was not fun. No, I can it ran away, though. <coughs> well, good for it, I guess. Or, well, no, good for you. Anyway, um, he starts flipping through. And this one. It was one of these guys. And he points what to... It? Uh, it, it does look to be uh, kind of a little bit like a tiefling. And you've seen a few tieflings around. Uh, similar stature. Not as big a, a tail. Has large wings. Uh, and the there's something about the way that it was drawn that just has this almost permanent sneer on his face. Deep, deep red skin, uh, large black horns that do kind of tilt backwards. Um, and the uh, the listing is of a Cambian, uh, one of the kinds of servitors. C A M B I N. Uh, B I O N. Okay. Um, it was one of these, I'm, I'm sure of it. At least that was the one that was tending to him. There were a whole bunch of other things that came in and out. The thing Mostly that shadowy tried, things. The thing that tried crossing over the green arm, was that in the other in the other dimension at all? I mean, a lot of things have green arms. A lot more than you might expect. Some of them here, even. Mine's not, though. So, shadows. <clears throat> I'll, I'll explain, I'll describe the shadows that are being seen in town to Vrinwick, and are any of the shadows similar to the ones we've been encountering here? Uh, maybe. Shadowy beings come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and sometimes they change shape and sizes. Could they take the life of living beings and reshape their bodies at will and make them corporeal? Or were they different? I mean, I didn't see that happen, so I don't really know. It. They seemed more like messengers. They didn't seem like they were in charge at all. Okay. They would come in, ask questions of the Cambian, I guess it's called, and then uh, they would go away. So this Cambian was obviously the leader of that particular group? He seemed to be in charge of that area, okay. and he certainly was in charge of the torture. There were a few other cages I saw that had some people in them. But they are all dead, though. I didn't get a chance to talk to them. Do you think they wanted information out of Emerald? Oh, I'm pretty sure. Do you know what this information was? No. And Nimmer wouldn't tell me what they were asking about. Right. He seemed to... Well, to be honest, he seemed to expect it. It was almost as though... Okay, I've known Nimmer a long time. Mm -hmm. At least I think I have. You it had a letter gets from a little him bit fuzzy. years ago. Right. It seems like he doesn't recognize that when you, when you point that out. Okay. Um, I mean, I have snatches of memory and... They go fuzzy a lot of times, but I've known him for a long time. Uh, at least I feel like I've known him for a long time. Anyway, I know how to read him sometimes. Um, well, a few times. He's really hard to read. He's hard to meet with, too, but anyway, carry on. Well, I mean, it's been 20 years since we were here, so... Mm -hmm. 20 years since what? Well, since I left to find him. 
20 years. So... You've been gone for a few months. No. No, I'm pretty sure it's longer than that. No. You, I mean, I didn't see the calendar when I was there, but... I was unable I, to find you when we returned from our last expedition. And now I'll tell him what date it is, because player me doesn't remember the date. Well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so clearly there's some time magic at work. <sighs> well... You were in this other dimension for 20 years. Seemed like it. I had to do a lot of searching around. I've forgotten bits and pieces of it, but... Okay. So Emerald hadn't been... Like, note to myself. Like, Emerald hadn't been seen for... A few months. Okay. So roughly how much time would have passed since... For Emerald in the other dimension, in his point of view? You have no idea. You'd have okay. to figure out if the time is constant. Uh, Vrenwick has only been gone for, I think at this point, a few weeks. Okay. And he claimed to have been 20 years. Anyway, as I was saying, he was in pain, Imro was, and he was holding up to it, but I get the impression that it, it wasn't, it was like he wanted to be there for a reason. Like he, I know that the, the, the red guy was torturing him for information. Mm-hmm. And there were a number of times when I could have gotten Imeril out. But he said, no, it wasn't time yet. He didn't, he didn't have what he needed. And I think he might have been, he might have been, probably should try to pour that away from the... It's going to catch it anyway. Yeah. Um, he might have been Was he after questioning the red guy and learning what he could. Emerald's really patient, I guess. For how many years? He has enough years to be patient. I wonder how many years he's been there. If you were there for 20 years and Emerald's been there, been missing or not seen for over a year. I saw a few new wrinkles. Yes. I mean, he's an elf, so it's hard to tell. But I think it was a lot longer. If he escaped through his own means by, by the teleportation circle, surely... He must have obtained what he was looking for. I guess. You'll have to ask them that. him that, though. I do have a meeting. Well, I, I don't know if he's going to make the meeting. You might have to go to him. Yes, I will. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sure he'll accord me a meeting on a short notice, considering I, hel I helped stabilize the teleportation circle and brought Adrian with his potion to him. Honestly, I don't know. I no. mean, he's going to need time to recover. He's missing an arm. Oh, yes. Do you think he would have gone to the temple right away? I think that's what he's trying to do. Shall we go there? Now? I mean, we can. Why not? There is... I have a few questions for people at the temple, as well. I have questions, but I will wait until he returns. And I really... I don't know about this. Talk to him, but then come back to me. I will, and... I will be awake for a little while yet. Is that Nala's voice or Adrian's voice? That's Adrian. Okay. Trying to distinguish them a little bit, but Nala's is, is a gruffer, yeah. the gruffer voice. And but I'll be awake for a little while yet, and I do need to know more. Whatever I find out, uh, there are large forces at work, from what I can gather. We should keep it all to ourselves, and perhaps... Miley may be able to provide assistance as well, assuming we can prove that she is who he is. Who she is. Oh my God. Just try not to alert anybody too much. If I there would. are people actually skulking around and people who aren't saying who they are, I don't know how many people you can trust. In fact, I wouldn't trust anybody outside this room for at least a few days. Mm -hmm. And when you go to see Emerald, be careful, because people are going to see you going. It's going to be unusual. Have there been any, any more sightings of shadows in the streets? I'm hearing reports of a lot more. Dude. And a lot more people going missing. Nothing seems to have penetrated the library yet. I'm not entirely sure to, why, to be honest. The library has defenses. Emerald assured me much, as much of that. Would never, never really tell me specifically what they were. Okay. It may be better to wait then. Sorry. 
I do have questions at the Temple of, no of Noazumi. Mainly about how to make myself more resistant to psychic damages and curses and all sorts of unfun things. I've gotten oil for that. <laughs> There's a voice from your past. <laughs> I have a ring for that. There's a cream for that. Um, Preparation wisdom. I need to get some sleep, says Na says Nala. I believe we all do. Um, Adrian pipes up. I'll show you back to your your rooms, and uh, I'll pick up a couple of guards along the way. Excellent. But we will not. We have to agree not to talk to anybody about this, at least until we've cleared up a bit. I agree. We can call ourselves Book Club. Nobody talks about Book Club. Or, you know, a story club for Adrian. A book club at a library? That seems not entirely unusual at all. Exactly. Who's going to suspect the book club? Everybody's going to want to join it, though. Which and do you is think why we must mention and, nothing of it. And do you think that he is going to... And he looks over, and all of you kind of look over to the place where Vrinuk was standing. <sighs> I'm... I... I'm both impressed and really annoyed by him skill. I just roll with it. He comes in handy at the appropriate times. He brought it. And you know his emerald. I wish there was a way we could restore his memories. If they were taken, maybe they were taken for a reason. But yes. until then, let's get out of here. We'll lock up his office, make mm -hmm. sure that everything is secure, and get you back to your spaces. Yes, I do need some sleep. And, and I have so, work to catch up on. And so Adrian goes out. Um, the first guard stands that he finds, basically the patrol scrolls that are there, he, he brings them along because he doesn't want anybody to be walking alone. Uh, first dropping off uh, Nala, who you find does not actually stay in the uh, regular wing. She actually has a space beside her workshop <laughs> um, where she stays. I want to get to that power level in the library. Um, and you can see that her assistant is actually still asleep there, too. Nice. Um, drops uh, Nala off, then takes you back to your residence room as well. Um, and then he, with the other two guards, uh, one of the guards stays behind here, and the other one stays, uh, it goes with him. Okay. So there's a guard outside your room. One guard? Yes. That's against the rules. It's unfortunately not good enough. But you're inside. So and have to... You see him instructing another one of the guards that's on patrol to kind of start shifting. Okay. But there's one guard left there for the moment. Okay. He's still within eyesight of the one guard he's left behind. Um, you can see him kind of shifting the this, this schedule as he can. Okay. I'll make sure I pay attention to any uh, going-ons outside my door. Okay. Like the sounds of somebody getting killed. Actually. I'll kill someone to make sure there are no. sounds. <laughs> To make sure he knows what that sounds like. Just to make sure. <laughs> if you hear a sound like this... What, <laughs> what time of day is it right now, by the way? Is it it's, the it's late evening. Okay. So I'll prepare to go to bed, and I'll cast an arcane eye. Okay. And just kind of park it outside the door. Okay. So I'm, I'm I mean, once you go unconscious, it's gone. Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm, I figure I'm going to be like awake for another hour, like, you know, brushing okay. my teeth, making myself, ch changing, in my, changing into my pajamas, you know, all that jazz. Okay. Um, you're in your small uh, bathroom area and you're kind of doing the nighttime preparation mm -hmm. when you hear uh, the sound of your bed pretty significantly. Brinwick. Um, do you say that? Yeah. Okay. And I'll turn around. You really need to get that spring fixed. Are you ready to go? What? what, what? Whoa, whoa, hold on. Go where? You wanted to go to see Emerald tonight, right? Where is he? Well, I think he's at the temple. Is it a good idea to go when the shadows are roaming the streets in greater numbers? Probably not. We can go tomorrow if you're really that worried about it. Well, I would like answers right now. Ah, <sighs> friend, okay. You enabler. <laughs> How do you propose we get there as quickly as possible? Well, I was thinking the window because I don't think you're going to fit through the gate, through the the areas. No. The uh, the ducts. The ducts. Thank you. Words are failing me suddenly. Uh, you feel a little squirming in your interior pocket. 
Prina. And Prina kind of pokes her head up. Hello. Hello. I was just about to ask you something. Are you going to bed or getting up? What Both. day is it? She kind of crawls out of, out of your pocket. And just, oh, hi. Waves at Vrinric. Could you do me a favor? Yes, sir. And she kind of swings out. Suddenly grabs her sword. What can I do? Is it him? She no, kind it's of, not him. She menacingly sort of waves her little tiny sword. Vrinna, by the way, who don't know, is a sprite which lives in a pocket of, uh, usually lives in a pocket of Yeah, Zach pocket dimension. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, if anybody, can you keep an eye on my room? And sure, somebody, where's it going? Nowhere, hopefully. Huh, okay. And hopefully nobody is coming anywhere in it, but if I come back and somebody's gone into it, could you let me know? Okay. Wait, so, where are you going to be? I have to uh, go to a quick visit to the Temple of Nimazini. Oh, and you're not taking me with you? She looks really sad. Well, as only a tiny little anime face can do. Eyes go big. Quivering lip. Fine. <laughs> Just don't be seen. I mean, if you want me to stay here and watch the place, and you kind of flies around, it's almost like it's weird because she's flying around, where there is that sort of shy, kick the ground kind of motion that happens. I mean, I can stay if you really need me to stay. I can do that. Brinwick, for how long do you ex do you expect we'll be gone? Um, in my experience, time is something that you should not probably try to measure or estimate. Will I be back in time for work tomorrow? Sure. That doesn't sound very convincing. Oh, let me try it again. Sure. <sighs> In any case. Prina, if we may we may be a few hours, so it might be best if you stayed behind and watched my room. If we were gone for only an hour, two hours, then sure, come on with me, but there are valuable items items in my rooms and I would pay Like under the bed? No. There is nothing under the bed. Sure there is. And she starts pulling the the, uh, the covers up. See? Like, you can still see the lump in the mattress. <sighs> and Vrindrix is sort of look, mm -hmm, looking over. I'll... And then there's the other things, and where you put your gold, and where the other guy, the the, the, the Yorkie guy, where he hid all of his stuff around the room. He was pretty good at it, too. Is it really that obvious? Well, I mean, I was standing right there when you put it away. I mean, to Vrindrix. <laughs> oh. Uh, Vrindrix just kind of Casually looking it over. Doesn't really seem to care. All right, I'll figure this out later. Mm. I'll grab the book. The okay. Zahalas book. Okay. Put it in my bag. Uh, so, all right, let's all go to the temple. There, there is a little bit of a look when... when uh, actually, make a sleight of hand roll. See if you can do no, this. No, I'm not hiding it. I'm just... Because oh, okay. everybody saw the book. Like. Yeah. No, well, Vrenwick <laughs> hadn't seen it before. But he saw the lump of the mattress. He's sure, sure. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he'd like snoop through my stuff. Uh, now that he knows, you can, it's you can make I'm your own assumptions hide. about that. It's, it's very um. <laughs> So, all right. Just make sure you come back, and she flies straight at your face, but and you grabs can come your with nose us. and hugs it. You, you can come with us. I was I mainly thought, worried about this book. Anyway, I thought I was staying here to make sure that I'm confused. Just come with us. If anything happens, if we get killed by shadows, I trust that you will uh, let us let. My colleagues at the library know. If I get killed by a shadow, I won't be letting anybody know anything. No, I mean, if I get killed by a shadow. Oh. That would be terrible! Exactly. <laughs> she kind of flies in and kind of perches on your on your ear. So, we go out through the window. Yeah, Vrindmark walks over to the window. Takes a moment or two, because it kind of has to rattle a little bit, because it's frozen from the outside. And it... Just a second. He reaches into uh, uh, the sort of Bag, you now realize he's he's been carrying all this time, but he wears very loose, baggy clothing, and you never really noticed. You kind of wonder just how big he really isn't, if he is actually carrying this, because he pulls out a small pry bar about that long. This is probably going to make a little noise, but no one's probably going to notice this this uh, side. As it kind of breaks the the, uh, the ice, pushes open the window, freezing cold air. <laughs> comes moving in. You see uh, one of the gems on his, on his uh, actually it's probably the back of one of his arms, lights up a little bit red as he kind of, ooh, that's, that's bracing. I'll grab my uh, cloak. 
Brenna kind of dives in for the pocket because <laughs> it's much warmer in there. Okay. You put on your cloak. Um, you probably can't jump that, can you? No. All right. Uh, just a second. And he kind of jumps up, bounds off the bed, kind of crawls into the space. Uh, about 30 seconds later, comes back, and then actually the first thing that comes out is a knotted rope. Uh, you're not sure where he's gotten that, but he had a knotted rope stash nearby. Okay. Uh, ties it onto the corner of your bed, gives it a few tugs. That uh, probably won't slip much, and throws it out the window. Good. All right, just follow me. And he leaps out the window. I'm on the second floor, right? Uh, it's techno third floor, third. I forget exactly. Shit. I think it's third floor. Moved okay. upstairs with the right. promotion. <laughs> okay, so I will now. <laughs> make my <laughs> way down the rope. Okay. You look out and you can see that Vrunwick has, has uh, caught the rope probably just below the ledge and is very deftly moving himself down. He's not even using his feet. He's just letting his, letting his hands uh, slide it down. All right. How hard can it possibly be? Uh, about three quarters of the way down, he just leaps, falls in the snowbank. I'll carefully make my way down. Okay. That's a roll, right? Uh, it is with advantage, though, because okay. it's a knotted rope. Right. And so that's an acrobatics or athletics. It's going to be... So that's two nines. <laughs> plus one. <coughs> yep. For acrobatics. Okay. So it's a little okay. bit awkward for you to get out. The cold weather is making the rope already start to stiffen under your grasp. And you can feel your hands starting to get really cold. Uh, but you do manage to kind of climb down. Not probably as fast or as elegantly if anybody else cared or watched. Uh, but you've seen Vrinwick practically move straight down a solid wall. He didn't actually need the rope, most likely. I've seen him fly, too. So. Uh, briefly, yes. Um, and he starts to lead you out through the route and around towards the wall. So um, before I go anywhere, I will cast... Uh how do I just... I'll, ca I'll cast Mage Hand and close my window so it doesn't get freezing as hell, like... like. Uh, yep. Yeah, it takes a couple of tries because the window's already starting to get a little stuck in place. But you do manage to pull it down until it poom, lands on the rope. Okay. So it's not fully closed. Close enough. Or it's as good as I'm going to get it anyway. Okay. And it starts to lead you around the back. Um... You can see that he's actually walking in what is probably the pathway that the guards have used to go around. Mm -hmm. So you're not generating any more new footprints. Uh, it leads you around towards the back to a familiar looking shed. Oh. This shed. Um, there is a secret passage in here, isn't there? Well, it's not a secret if you keep telling people about it. I never told anybody. You just told me. Well, yes. Well, I wasn't able to find it, so I figured maybe you might. Hmm. I never told anybody else. Oh, okay. Uh, and he leads you to the shed. He quickly, deftly unlocks the lock that was on the shed. Uh, it's a little tougher because the snow has built up against the shed itself. Um, and you did have to break a bit of snow to get out to the shed. Um, but once once inside, uh, it's full of tools, uh, as was before. Uh, and he moves to a, a pair of old, rusty um, clippers that are on the back. Mm -hmm. And takes the two by the the handle actually has to prop, put a little box so it can stand up high enough. Puts them on, the, puts his hand on the two handles, and then opens them, and then opens them wider than they should go. So they're basically even. And you hear this as the uh, the secret passage unlocks. So that's how it works. There's a surprising number of architects who have really devious minds, or can be bribed to be more devious. Maybe I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you know who designed this passage? Beats me. Emerald told me about it. So probably older than him. Or older than me. Or something like that. Did he tell you anything about a fire and fire falling from the sky at the library during those days? I don't remember any fire falling from the sky specifically at the library. There was fire falling from the sky in the other place where we were. It seemed to happen fairly often. Okay. It was kind of frightening. Yes, that seems a little painful. Didn't hit anywhere near where we were, but I got the impression that somebody was not having a good day. Good to know. I'll make sure to stay away from that place. Yeah, never go there. Not unless you have to save somebody. And then he kind of passes through. The the uh, doorway, uh, it pulled the outside doorway closed as well. Uh, and then through this one, um, you see him uh, kind of... Uh, 
sneaking through. You can see actually probably more than he can at this point because you do have dark vision, yeah. right? Um, you can see him by pure instinct just kind of moving around, moving with his hands out in front of him. Um, and it is a stone tunnel that goes down, probably about uh, 20 or 30 steps down. It's hard to tell exactly as you're keeping number track. Uh, then levels out, uh, and you can actually smell from here a bit of the sewage that oh. probably this connected onto at one point. Um, after another half an hour of walking through this darkness, um, hearing off in the distance sounds of echoing sounds, of which kind of caused Vrunwick to pause and put up a hand and hold you back. Uh, he leads you through. Um, if I've made my map in my head right, and he has kind of followed a path that wasn't obvious. Am I remembering this path? Uh, do you have it written down? Do you have no. eidetic memory? Then Not it's yet. going to be difficult to re reduce. Okay. You'll have to figure that out later. Um, if I've made my map correctly, this was, should be the drain over there. That would be the one to the back of the temple. Inside the temple? No, no, outside. Damn it. Right. I don't think anything flows into the temple except through the front doors. Okay. I think it's part of the maze they've designed. Yes, I, I call it a that. maze, but it is. I've never really figured it out, and I'm pretty good at mazes. Um, Shall we go up, or this is you probably... first? I'm not tall enough to reach that part, so I'll go up. Is there a ladder? Uh, basically, there's a wall which has bricks which are kept out. Um, but it's low enough that even if you're on the bottom couple of bricks, you can actually push upward. Okay. Whereas he would have to climb to the entire top and then he wouldn't have much leverage. Okay. So I'll go and try to push it up. Okay. And you can feel his hands on the back of your legs kind of steadying you. Okay. Uh, make a strength check. Shit. That's not an advantage. I don't know why you're rolling two dice. I don't know. Do no, I just neither one succeeded. Yeah, neither, neither one. <laughs> I, 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 just I roll, roll, one, roll one die. I just figured, like, because Brynwick was, like, holding my feet, it was giving me extra life. He's a halfling. <laughs> he's, he's keeping you from falling off of that. Thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> Plus zero. Okay. You start to push at it, push away at it, and it starts to be feel really, really heavy. Uh, after a while, some of the snow uh, does kind of dislodge from the edge of it, uh, hitting you kind of in the face and mm. covering your face in snow. You hear a little coughing from your pocket inside as it kind of dribbled down onto your, onto your uh, pocket. Um, but you do manage to kind of move it a bit away. You get the impression that there was, it had been swept off at least once uh, fairly recently, but there's still a fair amount of snow underneath it. Okay. You come out to find the cold air once more. From there, we're going to move on to Amrun, I think, at this point. You cool. had uh, just encountered Iro and then moved on to mm -hmm. the Serene Temple. Uh, well, originally we were just going straight under a queen, but yeah, I think actually he'd drop off the uh, the dwarf and the goblins at the okay. temple on the way down. So the uh, small strike team you picked up in Rockdale. Yeah, uh, he'd just go to the the closer of the entrances. Uh, so the, the water waterfall entrance. Uh, yeah. Well, there was a little spring there. It wasn't yeah. really a waterfall. But, yeah. Um, you did yeah. find the spring frozen over. Yeah. Um, uh, he had basically gone and sealed it shut with stone shaping so it, oh, okay. he'll unlock I uh, open it up and then undo the stone shaping and say basically it'll probably be a few weeks before we're back but uh, uh, here's the little map that I annotated so they know basically where they're going um, other than that I mean they're kind of doing this on their own just to see if there was anything there so okay. Uh, no problem, sir. We'll manage to make it, and we'll have it all mapped out by the time you get back. Yeah, thank you very much. We're just that quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have fun. Stay alive. It should be warmer than it is up here. All of those things are something to look forward to. And with that, they're gone down to yeah. the tunnels. And then I'll stone shape it shut, lock it up. Are you keeping your disciples with you, or, is there, or are you telling them to wait behind? Because um, you have a whole caravan of people still there. Yeah, I'd say just... Uh, I, I, actually, on the way down, which is one of the things I forgot to mention last week, I wanted to mention was he would, like, in the evenings, I mean, he does some work on uh, the items he's working on, but he'd also spend some time just 
talking with with his disciples and whoever else wants to hear because we're all kind of crowded in the same place but about uh, basically uh, what we're here to do which is that helping people uh, what have they learned from today's things and uh, situations from his own history since he's 100 years old uh, about how this could have been handled better if he mm -hmm. had the knowledge or the inclination at the time sort of thing uh, so he is trying to teach them on the way down and on the way up as well um, so he probably uh, is there any of them that, that want to can come with him there's not much to look at but uh, he'd prefer for a few of them basically checked people over while we're taking a break uh, just to make sure things are okay it's something we would probably do every time we stopped for a bit anyways but um, you do find that Otno in particular is kind of constantly taking notes mm -hmm. or trying to. You find him when he's not taking notes, he's listening attentively, but later on you'll find him kind of by the fire as he can heat up his inks, yeah. uh, making notes. And he, he is one of the ones that definitely wants to go forward. Uh, his brother stays back. Um, but uh, Urena actually goes with you as well. Okay. Um, and, I mean, I'll... I'll on the way there, I'll tell them a bit about how we found the place, but uh, there's not really a whole lot to look at. So. Uh, and then after that... They're still that, kind of amazed by the glowing key that you use to open mm -hmm. up the uh, passageway beneath. Yeah, I keep that on a chain around my neck, underneath my clothes. Um, and uh, yeah, after that we would head just straight down to a queen, because it's only about a half day's ride, I think. From there, yeah. Yeah. And the the generally the the riding the driving has been easier in Vendra because there's not as much snow. It's much higher. There's less snow. It's much much colder, and you can see the cold effect on the land. Every once in a while, hearing uh, just the sound of a tree finally cracking under the cold, mm. and no longer able to bear any weight whatsoever, off in the distance, and it echoes eerily across the land itself. Um, you've seen again that that uh, dark uh, storm on the horizon, but after you told uh, Iro you'd yeah, come maybe back, a few weeks. Yeah. She the the storm itself dissipates off in the distance. You could tell they've kind of retreated a bit. Below you, the city of of Aquain, uh looks in some ways like it had been before, but now with a frosted blue and yellow, uh, blue and white uh, uh, covering over it. But when you come into the city, it's much, much different. The bazaar is all but closed. Um, while there are a few people trying to sell things there, the customers are much, much fewer. Mm. Um, only the hardiest of, of uh, salespeople seem to be still out there, uh, and they desperately cry and call at your group as you, as you pass by, uh, spotting you even from the gate and kind of approaching you and trying to get you to go in. Yeah. Was, I mean, last time we were here, the roads weren't really built for large wagons so we'd probably stay near the uh like just find a place to stay near the gate and uh then go to the like well we'd probably stay there that night and go to the market in the morning okay uh, once people have rested up and i've got a couple of things to do before that so okay it takes you a night. while because it's a fairly large caravan but the yeah. you also find that most of the the travelers uh inns I think it might be a brand name, but the uh, Traveler's Inns are are vacant as very few caravans have been coming in at all. Um, and there are some that are kind of permanently there, not willing to leave Aquain. Yeah, It's not uncommon you get from some number of them that travel is fewer, uh, lesser in the wintertime. But people had been coming in on the boats and building caravans, anticipating winter to be over, and now they find themselves stuck here. Uh, oh. Food is, is as scarce as it has been for the entire journey. They do have fish. It's one of the few things they yeah. still have a fair amount of, but any kind of vegetables or grain, that oh, yeah. stuff is, is completely uh, gone by this point, or the price is so enormous. Um, um, I, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, once I've got everyone settled in, uh, I say basically we'll try to, to uh, get enough to uh, head back up for the next day or so and uh, then head back. Um, uh, I basically pass word along to the other caravans that are there that if you're looking to go up to Vitor or Farhaven or whatnot, uh, we will be leaving in a couple of days. Hmm. 
uh, and you can come with us if you want. Um, Have has the winter retreated there? Asks one of the mar- uh, merchants. Uh, not really. Last at least when I was last there, um, it was cold. Not as cold as it is up on the plains there, but uh, a lot of snow. Um, uh, it's a lot of problems with food. There's a bit of of, uh, of uh, nodding kind of around the room. They, that's kind of how they had expected it. You hear someone uh, jokingly over by the fire uh, call out, uh, "Cold as a hag's arse up there!" I heard. To which you see a response from a familiar figure not too far away from you. A sort of darkness crosses across Catherine's face for a moment. Yeah, I look at her for a moment. Fight. Um. You hear a choking sound from across the room. As long as that choking doesn't result in death. Probably someone's someone's <clears throat> wine going down the wrong way. Mm. Uh, well, I tell people to get ready. Uh, we'll see what we can find here. Um, I'll see who I can talk to at the, the, the bazaar once we get there. Uh, some of them probably still remember me. Mm-hmm. That may help us some. Uh, before that, I have a few things that I need to do. Um, so, prepare for tomorrow. You get a feeling that not a lot of people are, are eager to make the trip. With they've got almost nothing to sell. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. I mean, if they if they don't have a reason to go, then yeah. But yeah. if if they were stocked up and and ready to move whatever they were doing, then they can come with us. Yeah. Um. And then I go knock on uh, Osgood Crane's door mm. to pick up my armor. So you did not see her in the market, whereas where you had found her before. Mm. Um, you don't have a home address for her? Hmm. Okie dokie. Do, 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 do. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> uh, hello, Osgood Crane. This is Emrin Alisar. <laughs> so you're doing ascending? Uh, yep. I say, I'm in town. I would like to pick up my goods. Uh, where may I meet you? Okay. You can respond in 25 words. <laughs> uh, there is a rather surprised response. Uh, uh, I had hoped you would return. Uh, the work that I had been doing for you has been finished for some time. Um, I'm afraid the weather get in the way. Ah. Uh, I will I will be at my forge, and she gives you an address in okay. uh, the eastern part of the city. Actually, I'll tell her when Sorry, I meet western. her that it uh, the weather get in the way, because I probably used some of my spells, so I don't want to go firing off multiple sendings. For <laughs> yeah. If only that sending spell. was a ritual. <laughs> that spell economy. I'm I'm very happy that sending is mm-hmm. a ritual. No, there mm-hmm. would be there would be entire businesses for. Uh, just sending sendings around. Uh, yeah, so it would be in the Camaro district, which is just to the west of the Grand Bazaar. Ah, uh, Camaro. I was yeah. thinking Camaro. It's actually a wealthy district where a nice there's, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, the merchants themselves have their own homes. That's where the business area um, for the bazaar where we had registered mm. all that stuff was happening. I see like nice muscle wagons with turbocharged mm-hmm. uh, horses. C O M E R R O, just to be clear. Emeroon's wagon would fit right in. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get the spinny rims though. My, no, my, <laughs> I told him <laughs> Mine is one of those 1970s vans with like a, a dragon and unicorn painted on the side. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll head over there to uh, okay. pick that up first. Um, you can see kind of there's almost no nothing from the outside that you can see the home is very much a, a uh, it looks like it probably was a fancier place <coughs> at one point but now has been reinforced perhaps against the cold you can actually mm. see that there are uh, bricks of some snow that have been piled up around the outside of this yeah. uh, which is not something you see very often here and there's not a lot of snow not the, not the amount you had from Vitor yeah. so this was probably a deal that she worked out to get the snow to reinforce the home one of um, snowballs but uh, as she comes quickly to the the front door because she was expecting you, uh, the thick, heavy door opens up, and you see the tall uh, form of Osgood uh, Crane uh, standing there. Come in quickly. Hello, ma'am. 
Um, and inside it is actually much, much warmer. Uh, I suspect that she actually keeps her forge going all the time. Yeah. Uh, especially in the, in the uh, winter time. She leads you back to, to indeed the, the back area. You can see there's about a half a dozen other people also working on things. It gets rather noisy. Um, you can see that most of them seem to be making um, what look like long poles um, with uh, wooden handles with reinforced um, uh, triangular heads on them. Um, the poles themselves uh, are probably 50 feet long, which is tremendously long. Um, and they're working mostly on the fittings to make sure that the wood stays in. Hunting some particularly large fish? Uh, no, no, they want to get the boats out of the harbor, and they need ways to break the ice up from a distance. This serves well mm -hmm. to push the bigger pieces out of the way and crack it a bit. I may be able to help with that. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Just help after we've sold all these or got paid for them. Oh, uh, I, she's uh, kind of half-heartedly, uh, jokingly only, saying that. I'm only here for a day. I suspect that you'll, they'll be needing those for a few weeks yet. Um, I, anyway, I finished the armor. I've been kind of tinkering away at it, actually, ever since, because, frankly, there hasn't been as much business once mm -hmm. the cold fell. Understood. Oh, she shows it to me. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful it, work. It is. It is I, you can tell that it was the armor you ordered and then in the months since then mm. especially when she got bored she was tinkering away at it it has a lot of ornamentation something you wouldn't necessarily have expected from Osgood given mm. that she tends to have a very simplistic uh, yeah. view about her and, and the work that she'd yeah. done well I had given her some designs or whatnot as well for, mm -hmm. just for ideas for ornamentation and it seems like she took most of those and then kind of went one step mm. further as well um, oh, this is beautiful I I I consider this to be one of my works of art, better than the workaday versions I've had to create. Should well, stand something, someone well, especially someone who garners as much attention as you do. Well, you also notice that the yeah. armor has actually been buffed out a bit. It's fairly shiny, actually. Hmm. Um. Well, I uh, I intend on uh, perhaps. Attempting to gain some attention tomorrow, so uh, this will help. Um, what are you planning to do? Something I should be aware of. Uh, well, I'm afraid uh, Vitor, uh, up north, uh, is in dire need of food. So we've been sent down to try and buy what we can to help people survive up there. So I thought I might make a presentation to the market. Uh, you See, won't find uh, a lot of food around here, and the market's been looking pretty sparse. Yeah. Sparse? Sparse. Sparse. Hmm. Uh, Spare. I guess. I'm afraid we have to do what we can, though. See what we can get. Um, but, uh... Well, good luck to you. No. Thank you very much. Do you want to try it on? Oh, well, certainly. I can I, give you a hand. Yeah, there probably have to be some sizing and whatnot. Yeah, so yeah basically there's there's out. straps involved that, that kind of allow yeah. it to, to adjust. It is the kind of armor you cannot put on just by yourself. Yeah. Uh, you will need help for it. It's like cosplay. Yes. <laughs> well, well yeah, it's, it takes, it's, uh, it's cosplay, only real. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you can do it yourself, but it, yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, uh, it's very hard to. It's very hard to. And you have to have the right environment around you or you're going to be, you know. Yeah trying it forever so yeah she helps you very deftly put on the armor it's it, obviously she's done this before uh and she cinches it maybe a little tighter than you at first appreciate uh sorry is are you making it to be the ambitious size or the size you're at right now mm. you probably lose a pound or two <laughs> i'll probably lose a pound or two wearing this so we're good it is quite heavy um but remarkably uh it it's heavy because you haven't worn something like this before, yeah. but you quickly uh, adjust to it. And, yeah, and as she adjusts the straps, it sits better on yeah. you as well. Be being mithril, it's very, very lightweight for yeah. that kind of armor. But it's the but same I, thing. It's like a light backpack still feels heavy the first time you put it on. Yeah. Um, and and I, the most I've worn before was a breastplate. Yeah. Um, it's like, well, this, uh, huh. I've never worn this much armor before. Stand still. And she I reaches do. over to one of the heavy mallets. That she has. This is not going to hurt at all. And there's a moment where you think, I hope she's right. 
Yes, yeah, with all of her strength, she puts puts uh, behind the. Uh, she nails me in the face. <laughs> all the one. No, actually, we're straight square in in the yeah. chest, and you know with satisfaction, despite it was a heavy blow, and it did kind of push you back a little bit. You know, there's not even a mar on the, mm. the part of the chest. I wait till the ringing goes down. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's. Uh, uh, well, I must say, very very uh, exceptional work. Uh, it's a pleasure of a material to work with. Most of the time, it's. Well, most of the time it's a lot heavier than this and a lot uh, uglier. Well, I try not to be ugly. <laughs> that um, you aren't, and she kind of slaps you on the cheek. Yeah, I rock to the side. <laughs> rock back. She's surprisingly gentle with someone who's that strong but works with such such small material. Yeah. She's actually quite deft uh, as well. Well, I'm afraid I, there are other places I have to be tonight, but... Uh, uh, I, mean, I would say if you have, if you have need to be in Vitor, you could come up with us. But things there are probably worse than they are here. So. Uh, I've got my business here, and we're, we're working a meager existence at least. Mm. At least warm in here. Uh, that's one benefit of having a forge. Um, if you can afford the fuel, and we can, then it's good. Good to know. Well, if I have uh, need in the future. I've actually had some ideas, and I show her the big. Uh, I show her the shield mm -hmm. uh, with uh, basically it's a, a metal rim, but the the crystal fronting on it. Uh, I tell her it's a strange-looking shield. Uh, yes, it was a prototype. I think it's. Uh, I think it uh, is good enough, but uh, at some point in the future, I might uh, like to get her. A better version of it. Hmm. Um, better in what way? Maybe a little nimbler or something. I mean, I, I merely don't use a shield a lot, uh, but uh, uh, whatever a masterwork kind of shield would be in okay. that. I mean, I assume it would be kind of lighter but still strong uh, sort of thing. Yeah, like yeah. Um, um, she pulls over an enormous uh, slate. It's like a rock slate, mm. uh, and pulls out some chalk and starts to sketch uh, yeah. as you're talking about this. I, I don't know how soon it would be, but uh, I, mean, I know, like, I just worked with a, a basic setup to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, but because uh, I know, of course, a high quality one could go for significantly more. But I uh, can't set into this crystal stuff, but I could, get no, to, I that, could probably make a frame. Uh, yes, that, that's basically what I would be looking for. Um, Do you have any more of that mithril lying around? Oh, well, I didn't have the missile before. She was the one that got it. Uh, didn't you range for it? And she was the one that worked no, it? No, I asked her if she oh, had right. access she to actually it. She had said access. she had yeah, some. That's right. Um, if I can get some mithril, I will or I will keep an eye out. Perhaps uh, I can. You might keep an eye out uh, by talking to the uh, miners in Dren. Mm, well, hard to gain access to Dren. If you're yeah, not a dwarf. That's true. And I'm not a dwarf. No. Sadly, my ear's a little pointier than theirs. Hmm. But, uh, anyways, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, and again, this beautiful work. Uh, I will recommend you to all of my friends who are looking for armor. And uh, I believe you only paid 50% up front. No, I paid the whole 50, thing. Okay. He, I think he paid two hundred initially, but then after uh, when we got back from Tarsal, I paid the rest of it. Okay. Uh, so he just had to pick it up once okay. it was done. Well, it was fine work to work to do on, and it uh, kept us in all the coal and food we could have for a while. Well, it was a pleasure doing business with you. Uh, well, and do I have a title to, to say now? After the display in the market, people keep saying this should be a title. I don't know. Uh, everyone else just calls me Amrun. Occasionally, what the hell are you doing, you idiot? Um, we Maybe have, there'll be a title one day. We have forgotten up to this point, again, unfortunately, uh, Thorn. Yes. Is Thorn with you, or did you leave Thorn somewhere? Uh, it's really cold out, and Thorn's rather small. Yeah. So you, I, you do still have the ability to put Thorn into essentially a pocket dimension. 
I probably would have left him playing with the Acolytes. Okay. Right. Uh, with a few now frozen oranges. And for for those who, who don't know, and again, there's always that catching up business, uh, Thorn is a pseudo dragon, but a silver and gold pseudo dragon, if I remember. Yeah. yeah. That uh, silver unusual. scales with little gold bits. Um, that uh, is a holdover from a previous occupation. <laughs> Not familiar. Who's <laughs> still around, yes. Because uh, they don't go away unless they die, so. I get that. And there's even exceptions in those cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will go see Dr. Alida. Okay. On the other side of the town uh, where the hospital was, which is where I think you saw her mm -hmm. the first time. And I'm probably riding on hooves. Okay. Uh, uh, the rest of the horses are, 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 are yeah, getting a nice, nice rest. And yeah. then hooves is, right, fine. Out in the willows again. All right. Oh, no. He gets to... He gets to to uh, uh, it's the hardest, around with master. It's the hardest working pony in, in all of uh, in all of the fifty five islands. He was complaining that he wasn't he was being replaced. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, and I make sure he gets ear scratches and yeah, that sort of thing. Um, the hospital is overflowing. Uh, you see a lot of people there with. Uh, as you go in, it looks like cold related. Uh, uh, problems. Some of them are uh, obviously nursing some frostbite. Uh, others are there because they've broken something by falling on the slippery ice. Uh, you also notice as you pass over, because uh, you will have to cross the canals to get there, mm. the cal canals themselves are frozen over. Uh, yeah. Which there's running water you can see underneath it, but there's definitely the surface of them is completely frozen over. And you can see all of the, the uh, boats that normally go up and down the canals are tied up on the on the shore yeah uh, with one or two that seem to have been have been left behind and are now permanently frozen into the canal probably not going to float all that well when spring comes no um well i will uh walk in and ask around for uh, dr alita okay and look try to gauge the number you of people that are here make an inside check uh -huh. Twenty. Okay. Um, are you wearing the armor still? Oh yeah. Yeah. He's getting used to walking around in it. Okay. Um, but you still have your holy symbol out on top of the armor. Or it's actually oh, yeah. built into the armor, isn't it? Uh, well, he's got a, a, actually well, a he's got one on the shield, but the the magical one, yeah, we on a chain okay. and amulet. Um, um, when you start asking around for Doctor Alita, you start noticing that the uh, the nurses and doctors that are there the physicians really because it's not quite yeah. the doctor stage um, kind of do a double take when they see you um, maybe out of recognition or maybe uh, anticipation mm. um, and they quickly hand you along to Dr. Alita who is currently engaged with a couple of different patients um, trying to uh, more or less the only thing she's able to do is give some of them some, some pain medication, mm. some of them using some oils to try to uh, restore the surface where the uh, burns were, where the, yeah. fr the freezer Frost burns, burns, yeah, frost burns. effectively. Uh, and so uh, kind of wrapping in bandages. Um, but as you enter into her uh, end of it, uh, in kind of this large treatment room, uh, you do see that a mural has been painted across the back of the uh, room. The mural uh, depicts um, probably the the origin of the mural would have been the conflict in the uh, market, in the bazaar. Um, but you do see um, the representation of a large dragon, which, as you recall, was not actually a dragon, it was dragon-like being. Uh, I believe it was a T-Rex that, uh, that the uh, other wizard had become to try to oh, do. Yes. Uh, okay. You see massive explosions, very stylized, but in the center of all this, with a radiant uh, 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 arc of calm that seems to be flowing over everything, you see a representation of what you quickly realize is probably yourself. Mm -hmm. um, with the glowing symbol, not quite perfect, because you didn't have an example to go from, she only had memory to go from, but the symbol of, of uh, Paluxia kind of in in negative but glowing within the center of that figure. Um, As I was, 
you do know that I wasn't there when the fight was going on. Uh, you, you were having tea. <laughs> and other people have kind of noticed you coming in, and then you I say that, and she finds she sort of to, to to realize that you suddenly realize you were there when you spoke, and she drops the the uh, the bandages she was working with. I'll try to catch them if I'm close enough. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Do it that way. Ooh, five. Nope. <laughs> you, you, you got to kind of reach down for them. They bounce off your fingers, start rolling across and kind of unrolling across the <laughs> oh, floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the, the gloves are kind of weird to get used to, too. Um, and she turns with, with sort of wide eyes. Uh, and then I didn't... I mean, it was... It's. How can I help? I'm sorry. And she, she kneels down in front of you and bows I, her head. Take her by the hands there, please. You don't need to kneel to me. I'm I didn't, not a boss. Or, I thought it would be know. nice to remind people of the magic and the the, the power that you brought. I, and oh no, it's a it's a lovely picture. Um, I I think it's great. Uh, I was just kind of joking. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't get there until after the fight. I wish it, I'd been there in the middle of the fight, but it's hard to show time passing in a mural and and. They did a beautiful job of it. I hired two young artists to, to, to fill it all out, and oh yeah, they hadn't seen work. all the stuff themselves. One of them had been near the market when just seen it from across mm. the canal. But uh, I can have them fix it. I can change oh, it. Oh so no, that it's, no, no! This is great. Um, um, and you can hear now there's a bit of whispering help? going on around the the patients are kind of like, is that him? Is that him? I don't think. Uh, is that how him? may I help? Hi, if if you can heal these people. There's been a number of, of incidents, mostly small, but they keep coming in. The cold is causing us all to have mm. problems. If you can I understand, sure. These people uh, are, are cold and hungry and, and in pain. Uh, if you can bring, uh, where where is your ward with the worst ones or the worst cases, the uh, ones who are in most fear of of their life? And you kind of uh, see her glancing at the patients who are all like. Kind of feel like they want to jump into the head of the line here. Uh, follow me, and she goes through. Uh, he shouts at a nurse, "Take care of them. I'll be right back." I, I turn and say, "I will return shortly." Um, you can hear the murmur kind of get much louder after you leave the room, uh, and she leads you down the hallway uh, and around uh, around a corner. Um, the people in here, we've done what we could to make them comfortable, but there's not much else we can do. There's been a few different fevers running around, and we think that it's somewhat contagious. She hands you a uh, a uh, cloth, uh, and you can see her tying one around her face as well. If there's anything you can mm. do for them. Uh, well, I can but try. I'm trying to find, where the heck, oh, you can, oh there we go. Uh, oh, it's only one minute, though. Okay, well, uh, how many cases of fever do you have? There are 25 people oh, in this room. Lord. Not um, all of them are quite of the same level. Some are on death's door. Even if you can treat them for the day, the rest will get hope from that, I think. And Well, I can at least... It is easiest to heal the harm done, which may at least reset them to some degree. You, I can cure diseases, but it is sadly less efficient than the healing. Whatever you can do for as many as possible, I'm sure would be appreciated. If you're ready? Oh, oh no, enter disease or condition. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, uh, yeah. Well, it's going to take me four castings of it, but I will use Prayer of Healing, which can heal six people at a time. Okay. Um, so she leads you into the off. room and, and opens up the door and says, Ladies and gentlemen, I have a wondrous announcement to make. I've spoken many times of a being of, of health, healing, and helpfulness, and he's returned once more to help us all. Ego. I present to you... <laughs> The Shining Light, Amrun Elisar. And there's a, a there's a look of, of of the nurses who are there, kind of like, what's going on? A couple of them seem to be, like, deflated because, it's like, oh, there she goes again. Uh, but many of the patients kind of look over uh, with uh, hope 
Uh, you can see that the disease has progressed um, in boils and red reddening of the skin, angry looking uh, swelling in number of, number of them, where their faces are starting to almost be consumed by this strange disease. Um, make a medicine check. Yeah, I'm, I'm unskilled, so let's see. Fourteen. You've heard of a lot of uh, a lot of dangerous diseases and such. Um, this one seems pretty severe, mm. uh, and you don't know anything about the cold, but it doesn't seem entirely cold related. No. Um, well, first thing I'll do is immediately start healing people okay. uh, that are there. But afterwards, I'm going to ask like. What I'll, does the prayer of healing sound like? Uh, let's see. Kind of like a... Uh, I mean, it takes, I think, ten minutes to cast. Uh, it's fairly slow. Uh, it's probably kind of like a hymn that slowly builds on itself. Um, kind of like... Um, kind of like uh, you know, uh, row, row, row your boat, okay. where you get Rounds, one maybe. singing it, and yeah, kind yeah. of in, hail, in hail, the round. Hail, <laughs> His voice is kind of almost carrying on and then starting another thing until okay. it becomes just a constant in the round sort All of right. thing. Um, After a couple of rounds, you hear Dr. Alita trying to mimic the words and trying to follow along. She's not having much <laughs> luck, though, because she doesn't know what the words are yeah. saying. I'm probably speaking in Celestial as well. Yeah, she doesn't understand yeah. that, so... Um, but she's making an effort. Her performance and, role is uh, not great. Yeah, there's probably kind of a ghostly, watery sort of flow that comes out like waves, mm -hmm. sort of, and slowly sort of uh, he, it basically heals over time sort of mm -hmm. thing. is um, Probably what the visual is almost of a wave itself, kind of rushing out and cresting over people. Mm. And uh, what's the uh, what's the effect? What's the range in, in targets? Uh, six targets. Uh, I think it's probably fairly close range because it's meant to be done outside of combat. Uh, it's probably... Oh, 30 feet damage. Uh, yeah, 30 foot range, 10 minute casting time, 6 targets. Uh, each one would heal uh, 2d8 plus uh, 7. No. Okay. Yeah, 7. Okay. Um, and so you're going to cast this multiple times, basically continuing the hymn as you move yeah, around. Yeah, basically he'll, so, he'll probably move along and continue it just with a, a new group of 6. Okay. Um, there are audible reactions from those who are t t affected by the spell, as you can, you can audibly hear their relief um, from the at least the pain that they were suffering under, mm. and definitely deterioration where their bodies had been malnourished, but also uh, the the racking pain that this seems to be att attending to this disease. Um, uh, I keep an eye on the one that looked. The worst ravaged. Okay. Um, and that was after, in the far corner, basically away from yeah. most of them. Um, and then I will uh, uh, ask uh, Doctor Alida uh, how long has that person been sick? Uh, basically, how fast does this seem to be acting? Uh, they've been here for three weeks. Okay. The uh, the earliest has been here no more than a day, um, but we don't expect him to last more than a few more days. Oh, it goes that fast. Or did they... There have been others that came and died. Um, well... We haven't had much success in treating it so far. Um, after that, I'll... I will... Uh, yeah, how effective is it on them? Like, does it restore them to mint condition and then the disease starts again? It doesn't, it doesn't cure the disease. Yeah, yeah. But um, effectively relieves the pain and the ongoing effect or the previous effect, the accumulated <laughs> effect of the disease. Yeah. like, I'm uh, like the, the boils the, are, are kind of do reduce somewhat. The reddening kind of goes down, yeah. swelling goes down. Um, but the disease is still very evident. The one that's most recently in the room... Uh, it appears to have no more than basically a, a small, uh, be a, a kind of a, a canker sore almost effect, yeah. uh, and that does seem to to, to shrivel up. 
Uh, but it's still, you can see the ring of yeah. the red around it. Um, I will ask her who the, f the first four um, that... Uh, the first four that were actually uh, I think the four that seemed to be uh, that were being affected by the disease the worst the four worst case scenarios okay. but the four that have been here the longest okay. also in, yeah. in that case okay. Uh, uh, okay yeah yeah it doesn't seem to be uh, affecting uh, and it seems to be a range of ages as well although none seem to be children it seems to be mm -hmm. uh, young adults up to older adults okay um, Alita does kind of say to you in a whisper um, those who are truly elder do not make it this far mm. um, but the the four that are there uh, are the four oldest uh, of the or yeah. been there the longest, longest yeah um, then I'll tell the group or the the group of them I said uh, I may be able to help with the disease itself I'm afraid I can't help many at a time but I will be back tomorrow um, until then I will try to cure the uh, the ones who have been here the longest but do not worry I, I, if this works I will come back um, and then he'll try lesser restoration on okay. the worst case because it cures a disease and uh, how does lesser restoration look it's a one action that's, effect, right? Yeah, that's it's one action. It's probably kind of a lay on hand <laughs> with a very short, like, uh, kind of a, just uh, Paluxia, please aid this person. Okay. Probably a lot of the one action healing ones would be that kind of prayer, but with a slight difference. When you uh, when you do that and you hold on to your your heal at your your um, your holy symbol as well. Um, what others see and can describe to you so much later, which you almost don't see because you're the center of everything, is that it's almost as though a crest of water, an unseen wave, splashes up against your back and flows over you, taking them in mm. and then recedes and with it takes the disease as well. Okay. And the disease is washed off of their faces. Uh, all signs of it are gone. Uh, the previous healing that you had done probably actually keeps the rest of it from looking d yeah. d damaged as well. And yes, the swelling just washes away, almost as though uh, it was nothing more than a surface that was scraped off. Uh, and then okay. there's a cry from Dr. Alita. Uh, it is the power, the power of... Paluxia. Paluxia. I put in before she says Amrin. Uh, all praise. <laughs> and, and there is a murmur that goes around the room, uh, kind um. of, this is a miracle. This is truly a miracle. Uh, and then there is the piping around the room. Okay, me next, please help well, me. Uh, I say I get. I can only help so many a day, but I will be back to heal everyone. Until then, it has to be in order of who has been here the longest, and uh, I will heal three more. Okay. Um, and again, that similar effect. And there's. As you uh, are done, and I'm assuming you're leaving at this point, were you? Uh, probably. Uh, how many people were there other than the ones who had disease? Uh, had uh, the, the disease? Were there like another the, thirty or forty? <coughs> this room was specifically for those who had signs yeah. of that disease. Uh, the room that she had been in, where she was fixing up frostbites and things, there were about twelve people in there. Mm -hmm. The outer room, you'd seen another half a dozen to to uh, eight or nine people there. There okay. were a few coming in as you came in, and a few were leaving as well. So exactly. Okay, so there are only like a couple of dozen other that you've than seen. the disease that you've ones? seen. Okay, yeah. uh, you do do know there are other doctors, and they probably have rooms like Doctor Alita's, where she has kind of her own room. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I'll leave that one. I'll tend to the others, but basically, if I have any spell slots left afterwards, I'll come back and, okay. and heal what I can. As you leave that room, you do find uh, the patients reaching out to try to just at least touch you along the way. Um, trying to get uh, some connection they feel that might help them, even if minor. I'll give them a bro fist or a... Uh, <laughs> uh, most their of their, most of their hand touches hand. are very gentle as they are weak yeah. and, uh, and unable to do much. Uh, but there's, there's a, a, a definite uh, uh, look of pride, triumph, and a little bit of uh, amazement in Dr. Alita's face. Um, you get the impression, uh, kind of from what was happening before and what's happening now, that she has been talking about your power, 
f- ever since she were last here. But people have grown tired of hearing yeah. it. She goes um, in the next room and says, In your face! She's not quite that bad, but you're not sure what happens when you're not there. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so yeah, basically I'll <laughs> do the same thing, get them grouped up six at a time, mm-hmm. and just, again, with the, the prayer of healing... For the 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 frostbite and whatnot, I'm pretty sure just the healing is all that's needed. Yeah, because it yeah, it's a very minor it. effect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, he'll do that uh, until there's no more. Uh, uh, the really really minor ones, as well, he probably won't uh, won't bother with because they can just be tended. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, here's some bandages for. And they have finger. ways of actually treating that a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. stuff that doesn't like. Anyone who's not going to lose a finger or toe or whatnot. Uh, you actually interrupt one of the uh, surgeons who is in the process of, of removing blackening toes from uh, one young girl and say, no, there's, there's something that can be done here. Uh, and that, that girl uh, is amazed by the fact that her, fig- her, her, her blackened, uh, shriveled up toes turn from that back to a natural pink shade. Uh, uh, she gives you a big hug before you leave the room. Uh, yeah, I hug her back. It's like, you're welcome. Um, it's just in a day's work. <laughs> da, 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 da. I need a big. Uh, if only say, A cake. wasn't Avengers, I'd put an A on my chest. <laughs> It'd be Emran Man. Um, <laughs> or put a P on your chest. Yeah, Palatia Man. Um, a Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, basically, uh, however many people need to be healed for that I'll heal that okay. and then I'll go back if, if I so you're going to be doing that any... for several days um, well we're probably going to be here a couple of days but we can't stay very long Okay. Uh, but yeah like the next day if there's probably fewer injuries because we've kind of got rid of some of the backup mm-hmm. then he'd be using more spells on the the healing the disease but yeah he will try to, to cure as many of the diseased people as he okay. can um the second day when you go back, you find that there are more patients than there were the day before. Most of them seem to have very minor wounds, and some of them you're not quite sure have wounds at all, but the word is starting mm. to spread. Um, you also see a familiar figure there on the second day. Uh, Flamekeeper Tyrell is there. Uh, I, I didn't say uh, we need to talk later once it's yes, done. Yes, we do. Um, and he will... Uh, basically, give a, a speech to people, uh, asking that any uh, uh, said he will be here for a short while longer. Uh, if people uh, uh, actually, if pe- uh, actually, I'm assuming this will be the next morning. Uh, sure. After that, because that this is the day when we'll be heading up to the market or whatnot. But uh, if people wish to uh, see me. Uh, I will be at the bazaar uh, later today, uh, but you really, uh, it might be better to go there than causing the staff here problems at getting to the people who need to be injured. Um, you see a couple of staff just injured. like looking at you with that look in her eyes of, <clears throat> thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Because <laughs> they are definitely looking tired Can I help and, you? and worn. No, I'm just waiting for the Healy guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then, yeah, basically he'll he'll do the same thing uh, where um, he can uh, actually... Uh, he probably didn't heal quite as many people because I think I screwed up the levels on, uh, on that, but... Uh, um, yeah, he will uh, heal what he can for the injuries. Okay. But yeah, he's mostly trying to uh, stop the uh, the disease because that can pass on to others. Yeah. There are a few more people that have, that have arrived each day. Yeah. That have have signs of it, uh, but no. But you've kind of halted the progress, at least in the yeah. ones that are there. Uh, but it is a disease which is running rampant throughout a queen. Yeah, there's not much I can do about that, sadly, because there's no mass cure disease spell. But uh, I may pray for Paluxia to create one. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, he will work mostly on curing 
those who have the disease and then <coughs> and anyone who's got major injuries like going to lose a toe or a finger okay uh, again if it's just a small thing then the staff can handle it uh, um, and uh, after that uh, oh and he will uh, uh, he'll uh, tell dr. Alita that uh, uh, he's sorry he couldn't be here sooner whether get in the way uh, he will be do, uh, be bringing those who are interested up to the Serene Sanctum for some training, but he can't spend a lot of time doing that yet, unfortunately. But if she wishes to uh, come up with him, uh, it would be about a week. Just let me know when I should be there, and I will have others with me. Okay. Um, yes, I seem to have been getting popular. Uh a little strange. Um, I appreciate how she said portrait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when she when she talked about the commission. <laughs> um, I would say also if you could. Uh, um, the uh, the uh, the nobility that I healed of uh, embarrassments. Uh, last time I was here um, if you could see if there are others who need this um, let them know that uh, I do not need anything but if they could help the help us supply the caravan with food or anything else that would be needed up at uh, up in Vitor uh, there are people starving up there and that is why I brought a caravan down I will see what I can do. People are starving a bit around here, too. I know. At least you have fish. We do. Um, if I never see another fish again, I'll be happy, but... Mm, hopefully this cold goes away soon. Um, but now I believe I should uh, talk with Flamekeeper Tyrell. Okay, we're going to put that on pause. Yep. Uh, now we're, <laughs> we're close to what would normally be a break time. But we haven't heard from this side of the table at all yet, which, again, weirdness of downtime. We will eventually do so. Yeah. Um, so we could take a, a, a short break and then dive into it with, with you two, sure. if that's what you like. Uh, Is that okay? I don't, with? I don't care either way. Okay. Uh, I'm good. I've run to Eventually, we will have normal sessions. I don't know what those are anymore. We will. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're rock solid on the streaming. So if you are watching the streaming, thank you very much. Uh, that seems to be holding st steady for yeah. us. Uh, go figure. <laughs> so I've said that. Now we'll probably do something to mess it up. Uh, however, uh, we're going to take a quick break and be back. It's about quarter after the hour right now, uh, a little closer to 20 after, so probably uh, just shy of the half hour. Um, we'll be back at that point. <laughs> do a countdown I suppose uh, welcome back to our uh, not dropped more than 1.9% uh, frames so it's hey that's pretty not good not going up so yeah mm -hmm. I think we're more uh, or less relatively you stable talked. <laughs> it is starting it's, it's we might have uh, just lost everything because it's back to suddenly skipping uh, it's well, dropping 30 frames every second well we'll see um, what happens if it stabilizes or whatever. It was going really great up to that point. Uh, regardless, if you're watching this on YouTube later, then you're probably not seeing any... Any issue. <laughs> frame stoppage. Uh, quick question. Yes. When the discussion between Zachus and Emerald, or, uh, and the rest of the group, like Nala and uh, Adrian, and mm -hmm. what week was that? What month? <laughs> I didn't write It's it somewhere down. before uh, Clark's incident. Yeah. What year? What week was that? You yeah, and that tells us you get back somehow. Yeah. Or maybe you don't. Yeah. Well, to be precise, I don't know. Get. Okay. Uh, it it's all happen. timey wimey, wibbly wobbly. Mists of time are unclear. Doesn't seem to affect your study schedule whatsoever. Good. That's all I was concerned with. 
funny how that magic works. Yeah, well, you yeah. know. Maybe I just wound up in that po- that pocket dimension and like I'm actually five years older. Yeah, and actually, You're five minutes. And actually, uh, Prin is on the outside this time, putting you in the bag. Anyway, we will return uh, this time, going to the other side of the table, which has been sadly, up to this point, somewhat, uh, somewhat. Uh, I've been taking very detailed notes. Well, there you go. The audience now gets to become on stage. <laughs> As we start with, uh, we start with Elzera. Now, you had managed to push your way up through the snow, although surprisingly finding a fairly wide path already pushed out and trampled down on the route from from uh, uh, Padwich Glens all the way up. The first part of the route was the toughest when it was just around the, the Padwich Glens, but um, they are, are good enough at snow removal. There's enough of them, yeah. of the halflings and gnomes that live there, to make it uh, a relatively <laughs> efficient operation. And then making great great time, uh, still a little slower than you're used to, but making great time all the way up to uh, the tour. Not used to traveling with this many people. <laughs> that too, that too, and uh, the majority of people are uh, halflings that are traveling, which is also an unusual sight for you. Yep. And you see the uh, city of the tour nearly buried in snow. Um, along the way, you have noted. Uh, not a single sound of a bird. No deer have crossed your path. The world seems to be hiding. Now, granted, it is winter time, and most animals do tend to keep to themselves. Uh, Brenda has been sort of lumbering alongside. Um, Rascal probably would be trying to get into the warmest spot where you are. Um, but they're they're also somewhat wary. Um, Brenda now fully awake, having kind of shake, shaken off the, the winter slumber, uh, also seems to be somewhat edgy. Um, nothing specific that any of you can really note. No specific sign of shadow or beast or noise. It's just the vibe is there. The vibe is there. Um, a... Uh, Single horse is sent on ahead. Um, actually, no, sorry. Kosh is sent on ahead to let Vatour know that you're coming. Um, Kosh takes the form of a large stallion to push and move quickly through the snow to launch on up ahead. Uh, the kinfolk are staying with the, the wagon. Uh, Tello and Parda <coughs> now uh, having been covered uh, from the essentially the attack, which so brutally, uh, I think it was Teller, or Tello so. that, that went down from that attack. Having recovered, uh, it's been a few days. It took a few days to get the the harvest back in operation anyway, okay. and get it fully loaded. Uh, but they are also wary, although don't seem to be wary for the same sort of reason. The two of them seem to be scanning the skies as if looking for something to arrive. Interesting. Um, as you come closer to the tour and come around the west gate, uh, you can see that the gates have already been pulled wide. Uh, and there, standing with Kosh, is another familiar figure, one you have not seen for months, Ferendra Leaflight, the druid who had been an, ass- an assistant to Alexia Ferendra Fren- some time ago. Ferendra! And she's very happy to see you and comes to greet the wagons as well. Um, you can see that uh, visibly she looks thinner than she was. Um, while she would be able to do things like producing the uh, berries and other things, you suspect she's not been eating them herself. Uh, probably following the dictates that came out some time ago about helping the city, this being a much larger city, she spread herself thinner, perhaps, than you had to when you were in uh, Wellstone. But nonetheless, she's very happy to see you, and a very uh, warm smile greets you. Um, as you can see, also there are several others that are there, ready to unload the wagons the instant you pull into the town. And sure enough, uh, while there is some some bartering and dickering back and forth, uh, that seems to be very quickly dismissed with uh, out of necessity. Um, a fair price is negotiated. Uh, a bit better than fair, to some degree, because they're so desperate, they're willing to easily 
boost the price up. But you note that uh, while Para is not with you, the gardener is not with you, uh, one of the other spokespeople and the one who's doing the negotiations keeps it fair. It's a little bit above uh, standard price, but not, not gouging. Uh, but there are uh, bags of vegetables, bags of uh, you know, corn and potatoes <laughs> and, and typical very starchy root vegetables, the early ones, are all there. They've been growing them for months, uh, even inside the, the, uh, the wintertime. Uh, they're always early to market, but they were slightly later this time. The horde of people descends upon the wagons. There is some fighting. You do notice, though, that there are lines along the, along the road of uh, armed uh, guards. Well, you call them guards because of the way they're standing there, but you quickly realize that they are not wearing consistent outfits. They're not wearing any kind of uniform. You've heard a little bit of the, of the mercenaries that have been hired to protect the city or for whatever reason, um, and they are in clear number right now. Uh, Alistair Woodcomb comes out to greet you, uh, thanking both the uh, the halfling negotiator, but also coming to thank you and to thank Kosh as well. Um, very vociferously thanking you and thanking the druids for coming to our aid in this, this terrible uh, winter without end. It's the least we can do. We have these powers, and if we can feed some people at least, who can keep the rest of the people going, then that's, that's what matters. He pulls both you and Kosh aside a little bit to have a more private conversation. Not terribly distant, but with all the furor going on with the unloading, um, it gets you a bit away from the crowd. I put my back to the crowd. He looks very serious suddenly. Um, mm -hmm. He had been kind of welcoming and joyous at first, but now he turns to you, and actually Ferendra is there as well. Um, she looks a little bit nervous, uh, and she looks as though she knows what Alistair is going to ask. Tell me, have, have either of you seen signs of any kind? Signs of a battle? The signs of an invasion? And you, can, you, you, you see Ferendra sigh a little bit. She's obviously heard this question before. Uh, Kosh looks at you. Um, I haven't heard anything exactly although Felia the Many did say something about a dark time arriving I think I know what she means tell me what do you know I know that there are creatures out there that I don't understand and I know that they don't belong there and that even the trees are worried. Friend is nodding, uh, kind of in agreement. And that we were there when they came, and we thought we had gotten rid of them. At least that's what our elders led us to believe. You're speaking of, I've heard rumors, the... The hunt? Yes. Do you know anything about it? Uh, how it is here? What it wants? Not much. Nothing that I can know for certain. If you, if you find out anything more, your, your leaders are hard to talk to. I've sent Even... people to find them and they can't. Yeah. <laughs> I was... He looks, looks around, kind of making sure no one is watching, or no one's listening, it seems to be. I was given a vision, mm -hmm. a very disturbing vision, of my city falling. Is this Alistair? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the people walking by, you know, like celebrating and happily greeting each other. Many of the druids are here. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> there were things I couldn't identify in the vision things I didn't I couldn't draw the shape of but they came from everywhere now whether this was a warning whether this was a vision of what was going to happen or even if this is something of the past I do not know but it was it scared me and I'm not going to see my city fall so 
I see that. We've done what we can, but this winter is killing us. This okay. food will help for a while. And we'll need more. We, we will do what we can. I've, I've done the most that I can um, at the moment. And now it's, it's a waiting game for things to grow. Make an insight check. No. So okay. Five. Okay. Yeah, five. Well, I appreciate your help. And if you can send word to your leaders, uh, I would appreciate it. I want to know more. We'll take care of what we can here. I've hired a lot of people to make a difference. But... That plowed road really helped. If plowed road? The road is plowed? Yeah. It was completely trampled from hmm. Rockdale, about Rockdale to here. Well, I don't know who did that, but that wasn't us. Interesting. From Rockdale to Victoria? Well, I you came the other way. Uh, it was plowed on the way down, and nobody's ventured out. Mm. No, I'm just wondering if it's Rackdale to Vitor, that should be the one. <laughs> it is the one that, be that you did, but um, actually, no. Word would have reached him. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, Alistair about, should certainly know. Yeah, that's right. Word, no, word had, would have reached him. Um, that was your friend Amru Nelasar. They took a caravan down south. That I, makes sense. I thought I'd be a bit of a fool, but I still needed the hope. Hope is important. Indeed, more than ever before. Well, I thank you all for being here, and um, if there's anything we can do for you, let me let me know. Thank he you. seems preoccupied and kind of wanders off. Um, Ferenja turns, kind of to to uh, to round out the circle with her back to where he's walking away. Mm -hmm. You can see now there's a very concerned look across her face. Mm -hmm. I don't trust him. Something's going on, and I don't know what it is, but I don't know if I trust him. I'm going like this with my mouth. Why not? Alexia Ferendril hasn't returned. She went looking for her brother down in Aquain some months ago. I haven't heard from him, and, and I can't contact her. That's not good. I know. I've been I'm, trying to find out what's... You did? Yes. There was a bit of a situation, but I thought it was resolved. He hadn't returned. I've never met him, so I, I couldn't send a message to him, but... He was put in a, a position that he had no control over. And I know threats were made. Well, she... She wanted to know what happened to him, and... She could not contact him. She's not contacted me. You're the worst. But... Do you have an idea of where she went? All I know is she was going to a queen. That's where he had been. Okay. But... I've been trying to figure out what it meant. While she's away, I've been... Well, I'm an assistant of hers. I don't handle any of the political things. We've been doing some training of the, the, the hypocrite. By the way, it's doing well. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, it's not quite ready to fully carry someone, but it's <coughs> it's learning, would, and it's I'd understanding. I'd love to it. Uh, sure, soon. Uh, I'd love to show you. But that's mostly what I do, uh, is take care of that. I was looking at some of the, the businesses that Alexia had been managing. Not directly, but... As a counselor, you are put in charge of a lot of these things. Most of them, unfortunately, have been stagnant, especially since she left. There's just not any work to be done. Yeah. But the council has been... I don't know how to put it. The council has been quiet. But Alistair has not. He's been very, very vocal about 
making sure that the city is protected, about moving all of these mercenaries in, about other things that have happened, trying to find resources anywhere, to try to find things to be organized. Uh, but I haven't heard, of, heard a word from the other councillors. I think the Dwarven councillors went back to Dren and haven't been out since. <coughs> Not for weeks, I think. The other elven councillor, Torinkeet, doesn't really leave his home. I don't even think he's been to the council meetings where they've had. I don't even know if they've had that many, to be honest. Interesting. And bringing all of these people here, all these mercenaries. I don't have any more miles to feed. That's one of the problems that happened. But he insisted. And they came in droves. So uh, they're being paid. Maybe I'm just being paranoid or worried because I, I miss Alexia. I worry for her. I'm sure she's just landlocked because of all of the, the crazy weather. But that is also possible. She loves her brother. Her brother's always been in trouble from what I hear. But... I shouldn't be laying all this at your feet. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just seeing some people who are my people. As it, opposed it's to, comfort. As opposed to my mother. I laugh at that a little bit. You wouldn't like her. She's very bossy and very controlling. And you have to do what you have to do. Right now, I know I need to start cooking. A lot of people want to eat, and I'm sure we could make a few bigger meals, feed more people that way, live yeah. more efficiently. So, and Are you any good at cooking? I am a really good cook. Excellent. <laughs> the food kitchen's been expanding. That's good. It's been helping a lot more people than just those <laughs> that are destitute. Everybody seems to be hungry, so we can always use an extra hand in the kitchen. Um, I'm down for this. And, and by now, after this conversation, you see that the wagons are pretty much empty. The food has been distributed. <laughs> there have been a couple of them loaded up into smaller wagons that are going off to different parts of the city being distributed. Yeah. Um, but they were ready to have this food gone as soon as it arrived. Yeah. Um, word obviously had gone out a little bit earlier. Um, I'll stick around. Um, I will tell, I'll cast, uh, speak with animals as a ritual, and I'll okay. tell, um, Brenda and Rascal to stick close by, and... Rascal didn't cause nearly as much surprise, but Brenda definitely did. Yeah. Uh, people were kind of standing <laughs> back. When Brenda kind of rolled up into a ball and started sleeping, people sort of started to ignore her. Yeah. But, uh, but now that kind of woken and roused is definitely wanting to, to yeah. go somewhere. Uh, Rascal seems fine. Cities are not exactly an unfamiliar place, you think. Yeah. Probably not as an extended stay, um, but Brenda's looking around warily. Yeah. So I just tell him to stay close by and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, yeah. They're, 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 they'll stay basically with you and actually with yeah. the other two druids there as well um, this sort of a little cadre of <laughs> of, uh, of wild people if you will <laughs> gathering together yep. so you spend some time uh, helping out with the cooking definitely definitely um, you see a full range of people there um, the there are a number of people who come in that probably haven't had a place to stay mm -hmm. um, and you can see that there are people kind of opening up spaces in, in now nearly empty warehouses where a lot of people can stay. Um, but there's also a, a, a broad contingent of, if you will, the, the poor but not destitute who are also here to try to help save, uh, save a bit of money or to get food that they just don't have at home. Um, hundreds of people, actually. So you end up cooking for hundreds. Yeah. Um, but are you going to show off a little bit? I'll, I'll show off a little bit. I will use, for example, like, I, I was just the um, the mixing bowl. Okay. Because we're making foods 
Pooja hundreds. Yep. Uh, and so this was pre-stream. So if you want to explain kind of what that looks like, um, well, I think that was pre-stream. <clears throat> maybe. Nice. Yeah, it was like around so. yeah. the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's videos that we have. Yeah. That didn't didn't work out. Um. So for Tescu's mis mixing bowl is a spell that uh, is a cantrip that he created. Um. It is. Uh, you cause a mixing bowl and a spoon to become animated objects. Uh, and, yeah, so it's the stereotypical bowl with a self-stirring spoon. Uh, and, yeah, because I can't, I can't do the at higher levels, right? Is that what we agreed on? Uh, well, you can use a higher level slot, yes. Okay. So for, for the cantrip. Okay, I'll just use the cantrip. Or sorry, uh, yeah, maybe I have to rewrite that a little bit. Yeah, because it says starting at third level. Do you mean? Oh, that's char character level. Character yeah. level. Yeah. Okay. Then. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's I a cantrip use... that grows as you grow in level. Yes. Then, then I'm stirring eight bowls. <laughs> Whoa. Which is a pretty impressive feat. Um, uh, Ferendra is definitely quite impressed and actually kind of delighted by this. Kosh is a little bit mystified as to how you're doing it. Every once in a while, trying to hang on to one of the. One of the uh, the uh, one of the mixing spoons, uh, but it, it kind of kind of kind of wrenches out of his hand. Well, yeah, it's it's, it's pretty careful about it. Um, you actually attract <laughs> the attention of uh, an elderly elf, uh, and uh, looking probably uh, in her four or five hundreds, um, but definitely looking like she's had a, a, a full uh, hard life, maybe yeah. looking a little worn. Uh, but who smiles and does something similar. Uh, and she introduced herself. I will give you a name later. Um, but uh, the, she is one of the cooks at Maris's Blessing. Awesome. Uh, and it's uh, it's nice to see another student of Fortescue. Yeah, I found one of his books. It was really interesting. Really? I would love to read it sometime, if you mind. Uh, I have someone who's probably going to be borrowing it shortly. Of course. Uh, but a valuable book like that will will never sit still, I suspect. Yeah. Um, and so you found kind of another cook who was trained with some of Fortescue's tricks as well. Um, and it, it causes a bit of a stir as people who are just... It wasn't really intended, but that works. Uh, as people who come in and see this and the, all the servers are seeing all these things going at once, uh, you're keeping the, the, uh, the ovens quite busy. Uh, as all of this food is being produced in a much more rapid rate. Uh, but it is quite a delight, and uh, you do feel several hundred people have you to thank for one of the biggest meals, one of the fullest tasting meals they've had for ages. Um, over the next uh, while, and we're going to speed this up a little bit because I do eventually want to end winter. Uh, I miss you guys. But the, uh, over the things. next few, few days, uh, or <laughs> next week or so, um, that's kind of one of the repetitive things that's part of the, of the job you're doing there. Uh, presumably you'll check in on Zacchaeus, find that he's just reading books, as he always is. This is before Emerald uh, would have come up. This is why I'm trying to catch this up a little bit. Um, but one of the other things is you do get to meet the now essentially uh, young teen version of the Hippogriff. Yes. Uh, I don't have a name personally, so I'm leaving that actually for you guys' to name, Within Reason. If it's Hippogriff McHippoface, I'm just, I was gonna suggest. just gonna crush that, crush that dream right now. <laughs> but uh, I figure it's more interesting if you guys want to name uh, the the Hippogriff. Um, but uh, the way that Ferendra has been training this Hippogriff, she doesn't. She knows how to work with animals, but not in the training sense. Mm -hmm. She's actually been becoming a Hippogriff to train the Hippogriff, so it doesn't feel like it's alone. And so she shows you the form of the Hippogriff. I'll give you this one for free. You have the form of the hippogriff. Now, can you hey. can you have forms that fly yet? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. yeah that's, I that's a so. little. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that that was that was true. So uh, this will be actually one of your one of your downtime bonuses is you actually get the form of a hippogriff. Now you get the form of a young hippogriff, a teen hippogriff. Cool. So it's not the fully fleshed out uh, adult version yet, but it's because she actually gives you time to study the hippogriff uh, as you normally have to do, and with her instruction and having a hippogriff which is friendly to you makes it a lot easier than say a lot of the animals you've studied. Yeah. Um, and I can come back and study it when I get older. Essentially, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so you can turn into a hippogriff with attitude. Um, just a clarification, hippogriffs, I know we checked when we first encountered them, are not beasts. Yeah. That's the one thing I was looking at. Oh, well, that's... that's a, yeah, because she, she has studied them and seen them before. Yeah. yeah. You had to study them this way, though. You, you yeah. had the, the amount of distance. Actually, you didn't study the hippogriff. You were ignoring the hippogriff. I, I, was, I was getting the, the goat. goat. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was sorry. also a flying creature, which you could not yeah. study at the time. Uh, I, I'm going to make I, I an exception use. to this one. There probably won't be the magical qualities of the hippogriff, yeah. but the form of the hippogriff I'll, I'll, I'll allow. Cool. Just because I think it's kind of neat. Cool. Um, yeah, it's technically a monstrosity. <laughs> yeah, I don't consider this. Uh, those, those categorizations yeah. are a little weird, anyway. But I, I like the idea that both Ferendra. Yeah. I'd already wanted Ferendra to to be trained in this. And I thought, well, you're going to be there anyway. Yeah, they're not terribly powerful. Like no, they're no, 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 no. Yeah. They're they're more of a riding creature anyway. Yeah. Um, cool. But that's that's kind of how she's been approaching the training. Uh, she does not know much about hippogriffs, and the training is rough. The animal is definitely not not ready to have any kind of passenger. Um, but it's willing to kind of take some direction um, from a hippogriff, of, uh, another hippogriff, or even Ferendra when she's in her humanoid form. Um, but um, you can you can tell that the hippogriff is a little underfed uh, because they do not have spare chickens to feed it. Essentially, yeah. Um, they have hunted a little bit, but there's not a lot of birds, which would be it's one of its. At this stage, one of its best uh, best foods. There's not a lot of birds anywhere near the city itself, uh, and if they range too far, the cold starts to bother the, the hippogriff. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Uh, it would. Well, yeah. It it does bother the hippogriff. You do remember that the hippogriff, when it was found, it was up in the was up in the mountains. Yeah. So as it matures and uh, it's cold, right, <coughs> colder than it's normally used to right now. Yeah. But as it matures, its feathers fill out. Yeah. Um, and it's easier able to, to manage it. It would normally be literally kind of under the roost right now, <laughs> more, yeah. than, more than anything else. Awesome. Um, That's fun. All right. Uh, so we'll move on to finish up uh, Zacchaeus. Okay. To We're get skipping you caught Clark. up in time. Hmm? We're skipping Clark? Clark's not there yet. Okay. Yeah. I just... I just Want to make sure he doesn't die. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, that may have already happened. They may already have been dead and swept under the rug somewhere else. True. He's no. a changeling. He's the around. changeling. Oops. Oops. Yeah. He, he's got the changeling ability to make other people change things. <coughs> at least appear to be. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really mean. Yep. <laughs> Polymorph other. Oh, there's that... There's that... Bell that uh, does it, Nolzer's marvelous aura that lets you. Give oh, magical else. aura! Yeah, that gives you something, allows you to give something or someone a magical aura, like undead. Yeah, Nistel's <laughs> magical aura. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a weird, mean spell. It's some very specific, fantastic uses. Okay. <laughs> I'll make sure to pick it up later. <laughs> right. So, um, you are outside the temple of Mnemosyne. It is late night. And they pushed out of the out of the sewer place, um, kind of prop up. The, uh, Renwick and, uh, insists you kind of prop the 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 gate op- or the uh, the opening a little bit so you can find it again because yeah. it's basically in the middle of a snowbank. Mm-hmm. Um, you approach the temple. How badly do I stink? I wasn't it, in not, the sewer not waters. Terribly, no, you okay. can smell the, the 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 sewers from a distance, um, but that's sort of an ambient smell. There's not much that really lingers. Um, and you didn't encounter anything itself, just a, just the smell. Um, once again, you're kind of struck by this strange notion as you look at the Temple of Namazani that, that it never seems to make any sense to you because it always looks so small, and yet you've known, you've traveled inside, and it took at least a half an hour at one point to make it to that central room. Mm-hmm. Um, Runeric leads you around to the front entrance because there's only one entrance to the to the sort of square, boxy, featureless Temple of Namazni. Um, there's no one out front. You don't see anybody on the streets. It's cold, wind is blowing. Walking in. Uh, walk right in. Yeah. There's not even a door, as you recall. You simply go in and then passageway sort of curves off to the, or actually corners off to the right. Everything is at right angles. And you start to walk in and very quickly you, you enter from the dark outer stone uh, to the bright white, solid, featureless walls of the internals of the temple. Okay, so now that I'm here, I'll just wait and look around. What do I see? 
flat, featureless white walls that glow slightly. Okay, no signs or please wait to be directed. Or Nothing at all. Nobody around? Nope. All there is is the single passageway. What do I remember from my last uh, trip here? Um, you remember that uh, because you came here, I believe, to be relieved of a uh, curse, I seem to recall. I didn't come here. They dragged me here, but pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> um, and the, it, it's weird because you try to think back on it. It is almost as though you're staring at the white walls themselves. The memories themselves seem flat and featureless. Uh, you remember uh, twisting walls and turning that after a very, a very short period of time, you could not tell where you were. But I believe at that time you were being led by Zinzalor, the, the acolyte, yeah. and he seemed to be very confident about what direction he was going. Zinzalor. So, um, lead on. I'm not quite sure where to go. Well, Have you been here before? I don't remember. Which is probably no. Or perhaps yes. Possibly. There's only one pathway, so I guess it's this way. I have an idea if we get lost, but for now, let's follow this path. Maybe it'll lead us where we need to be. Okay. And in my mind, I'm just thinking of like finding Emerald. Mm -hmm. Or Zinzalor, actually. Okay. Because I'm assuming if, if Emerald's here, then Zinzalor will know. Okay. Walking along. Um, so the, the, the hallway continues, then takes a sharp corner. Then it splits off into three. Each identical, featureless hallways. I know that no matter which hallway I go into, if I come back, it's going to change into something else. Uh, You've never seen it change. Okay. So, uh, Vernwick, when you were exploring the ducts in the library, mm -hmm. you said they changed routinely. I mean, routinely might not be the right phrase. They change a lot. There's a sort of pattern. Do you think this place has a similar pattern? Huh. I don't know. Maybe. I, I guess I can try to figure it out. I'll try as well. Are you feeling lucky? If so, pick a hallway. Um... Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Let's go left. All right, left it is. You yeah, start moving along the, along, along the left-hand hallway. It seems long, um, and as you walk down, it seems like it has no end until suddenly you see an end, and it turns left, and then it turns right, and then there are three hallways again. Can I tell if it's the same ones that we were at before? It doesn't seem to be any features. They look identical, but... I'll take out a copper piece and put it on the floor. Okay. Let's test something, shall we? So let's go left, left again. Okay. You go left again. It goes down a long hallway. It turns left, and then it turns right, and then it turns left, and there are three passageways in front Is there of a copper piece on the floor? There's not. Well then. Mark one copper piece off your crate for sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn pennies. <laughs> Let's see if he runs out of money before he I finds it. <laughs> I lost my total. I'll just write it here. Okay. About as petty as I can be. Mark one copper piece off. <laughs> <laughs> as penny as you can be? No. <laughs> okay. Try left again. Okay. I'm assuming the same thing happens. Uh, it goes down a long hallway. It turns left. It turns right. It turns left. Then it turns right. And then there are three passageways in front of you. Still no copper piece on the floor? Nope. Okay. It must have gotten make a Make a intelligence test. 17 plus... 5. 4. Is it 4 or 5? Right with, with the color of billions. Okay. So, so, 22. 22? The distance you've traveled, you should be well outside the temple yeah. by now. So, you're you're deep inside something else. Um, what do you do? Maybe if, if I go this way and you go that way, we'll see if we meet up? I, I don't really know. If we get lost, we are even more 
screwed than we are I now. never get lost. I just don't know where I am. Same here. It's the same thing as being lost. Yeah, I sometimes. Have an idea. It sounds much better, though. Just wait a second. So I'll do ascending to Azenzalor. Okay. That was his name, right? Yep. Okay. Sending is going to be. We need to find Emerald. It's Zagus and Vrinwick. We took three lefts and are waiting here. Okay. <laughs> so you send out a few message, kind of murmuring and counting to yourself. Okay. How long are you waiting? For a response, first of all, does one show up? There's no response. For how long? I'll wait for about the 20 spell, minutes. The spell only lists, only is an immediate response. If there's no response right away, it's not coming. Okay. It's not delayed. Ten minutes pass. I'll do the same sending, but to Emerald. Okay. Anything? Just after you finish the spell, mm -hmm. you hear from behind you in a fourth hallway. A fourth hallway that means it right angles with all of the others. The one we just came from? No. The fuck? It doesn't feel like it makes sense, but somehow there are five right angles in this space. Mm -hmm. As Zinzalor stands behind you, the first path to true peace is knowing when to ask others for help. How can I help you? We were looking for Emerald. Ah, uh, yes. There was a situation at the library. We can possibly fill you in later, but uh, I, our friend, two of our friends assumed he has gone here. We're wondering, is he here? And if so, can we speak to him? And is Emerald he okay? is within the temple. And is he okay? He is recovering. Good. Okay is not quite the same thing. He's gone through something very traumatic. Yes, and his we... mind seems missing. What? That's not good. I think it is mostly him wanting to shut out the world. And if there's something that we can help him with, it's that. To shut out the world, you said? Yes. Okay. Can you take us to him? I can. Thank you. We'll follow. And he takes the right-hand path. Okay. The right-hand path leads to a hallway, which mm -hmm. is very long. Then it goes right. Then it goes left. Then it goes right. Then it goes left. And there, standing before you, is a large room. About a hundred foot on a side. Nearly featureless. Except for the center of the room. In which sits an ornate desk. Made of white marble. Mm -hmm. and at the desk, staring with, into the triangle of... Sorry, not triangle of his hands. The triangle of one hand, because the other hand's missing. Mm -hmm. uh, is Imral. His hair looks combed and brushed and washed tied now in the back behind his head. Uh, you notice that where it had been gray before, now it seems lighter somehow. Perhaps the cleaning off of dirt from decades of being in some other place. Um, he's wearing a white robe now, no longer tattered, uh, made of a simple soft cloth with no markings and no seams at all. Uh, but st sitting there, sta sitting, uh, staring at the half triangle formed by his hands. There he is. As Inzalor gestures. Has he said anything? Not much. What has he said? That he hurts. Well, yes, we've noticed that when, when we gave him the healing potion. That probably saved his life. He still remained on death's door when he appeared on our door. Well, I'm glad you were able to heal him further than we could. It has taken time. He's been here for a considerable amount of time. Is there any way to fix his arm? Not directly, no. What about indirectly? There's <coughs> nothing that we can do, but there are some who can perform such healing. It is a difficult process. Mm. I believe I know somebody who may be able to. I'd have to ask him, but in any case, has he said anything of where he was or why he was there? No. We did not ask. Do you think it would be safe for me and my friend to ask him? 
I think you can ask. I do not know if he would say. I don't want to be a, nu a nuisance. But I, I'd also like answers. I can hear every word you're saying, you know. These ears aren't just for decoration. Comes from Imral sitting at the table. And my apologies. I thought you were in a meditative trance to restore your health. I was merely taking a break. Relaxing a little bit. Which I am entirely sure you deserve. <coughs> Possibly several months of relaxation. If I... If my calculations are correct, you were in that dimension for several years, if not decades. I'll leave you then, says Inzalora, backs away. Wait, can I? I'll need to talk to you later. Just ask. Will do. Uh, Brynwick kind of bounds down the, the simple couple of stairs to the, to the room itself. Okay. Um, sits just kind of cross-legged like up the opposite side of the table. He can kind of look over the table a little bit and see uh, Emerald, but not much. Like, I'll do the same thing. Like, I just want to... I don't want to be, like, pretending to stand over Emerald, because that might be offensive. But... Just me. There isn't any other furniture in the room. Just that simple table. Okay. And a chair. Or simple desk and chair. Right. So I'll just sit next to Brynwick. Okay. So what? Where were you? What happened? I'm still trying to put some of that together for myself. Can we help? Maybe. I can let you know what we've been through in the last few months, me and my compatriots. That would help. So I'll Let's just... Start with the year. I'll see what what date we are now, and on that date that Miley was like, go, go adventuring, you know, pretty much. Okay. So I'll, I'll pretty much just, like, catch him on all the, de all the details, like, catch okay. him up on, on all the details, like, Arvax. He listens with a little bit of prompting to get some details, but otherwise doesn't say much while you're recounting this. Druid mood, wild hunt, Rhea, thingamajig, I'm not saying exactly where, but something something temple. Is he asking me exactly where? He is probing, probing for details. Yeah. What are you actively not going to tell him? It's probably the easier way to, to do this. Or what are you trying well, to do? Well, he's conceal? my boss, so I'm kind of trying to kiss ass at the same time, so okay. I'm probably just going to like... Bleh. I'm not mentioning anything about the old library yet, though. Okay. I want to know what he thinks about Alistair first. Okay. Yeah. He's not answering any questions at this point. He's just letting you yeah. tell him. And he seems to be interested. He's asking questions, specific questions, mm -hmm. uh, a lot like of times specific? to get details. Uh, get details. Yeah. Each of the people you can remember. Um, the encounter with the hag? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. I'll mention the one at the, at the druid boot. Okay. And then... Do you describe the books that you found? Which ones? Yes. The... Is that the last one? The, all the books. Do you, do you leave out any of those books? Well, I figure it's not important details, so I don't act... Like, I'm not trying to withdraw, withhold the information from him, but I just figure, like, I'll describe the actions that happened, not necessarily what I collected. Okay. Yeah. All right. If he asks, I don't know if he will, but... Um, well, I mean, one point you mentioned, for example, the library at the Hag's place... So he would ask, did you find anything interesting there? A few things. Um, and he would ask for details at that point. Books, they were illegible in the dimension. But after they were taken out, I could clearly see what's in them. Except for one of them. Well, two of them so far. I, I can read them, but it, it's dangerous. And that's part of the reason why I'm here. Uh, I've been blessed by Nemosini before. Something, something, cure for madness. <laughs> <laughs> so are you trying to skirt over those details about having, you know, gone into Forbidden Zone to the library and having found books that drove you slightly mad? And... Well, no, that, that was found from, like, a dude name. Oh, yeah, no, those aren't Near connected instances, at least not yet, anyway. Um, I was going to ask, actually, I have a list of questions that I was going to ask at our meeting, but I figure it's appropriate now because it's pretty much a meeting. Um, after you you explain all of these things and you give out your details, mm -hmm. um, he does uh, say, I have a request of you. Mm -hmm. Before I can collect my own thoughts, I need you to collect my pipe and tobacco from my office. Certainly. Where are they located in your office? Uh, Not behind any wards, I hope. No, no. They should be just simply on the sh shelf by my desk. Sure. What's 
so special about them. I'll certainly do it. I'm just wondering. They're very relaxing. Have you ever had a good smoke of weed, pipe weed, from the, the glens, and you haven't lived? I have not, but I would like to try it sometime. I have had Black Hammer's brew. It's pretty amazing. Mm, it's been a while. I'm not too fond of alcohol, but granted, I haven't had anything but turgid water and grains of sand, I think, for the last several centuries, so. That sounds Maybe like I need something to centuries. wipe my throat with, too. For how long were you there? Do you remember? I have no track of time. All right. The days started to blend together after a while. But if you can get me these things, then we can talk further. Definitely. I will uh, need at least two weeks. Understood. So, to get back into this room, is there a secret path? That the I think you can ask Zinzalor to guide you. I can. Is there a way to summon him without sending him a magical message? I think you can simply ask for him at the front door. Really? Well then, <coughs> I overcomplicated things. <laughs> Lastly, from where do you and Vermic know each other? <laughs> well, we go back quite a long time. That's what I figured, but his memories are somewhat shattered. I guess yours are too, and I've somewhat experienced memory and- There are some things that are not meant to be remembered. What causes something to be restricted at the library? What are the criteria for a book or an item to be we'll restricted? We'll talk more about that in depth. Uh, for now, I fear I must rest again. Apologies for asking too many questions. I'll return with your tobacco and your pipe. I will see you in two weeks. See oh, you then. I didn't say it was tobacco. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> but he mentioned the weeds of something something, so I'm pretty sure I know. Like, um, <laughs> hey, it helps with PTSD, okay? <laughs> Rinwick, if I could see you for a moment longer. And you get the feeling that is a dismissal as well as a request for Rinwick to stay. Fuck. How powerful is Emerald? Who knows? Okay, I won't try creeping. He's your with boss's him. boss. Yeah, <laughs> I won't try creeping with him with an arcane eye, but uh, you can which, certainly try. The consequences might be shitty. <laughs> uh, Frenwick, I'll wait for you outside, where the path descends into the secret path. Yes, I should be along shortly. I think, and he kind of looks over at Emerald. It will only take a moment. All right. So I'll walk out with... I'll... Zinzalor? And after a moment or two, you see Zinzalor appear from a pathway beside you that you Great. do not remember being there. All right. I'm ready to leave now. Ah. Or I can wait at... Actually, I'll wait for you at the front door. Uh, I'll say to Grimwick, because I don't want to wait, at, wait out in the cold if I don't have to. Okay. <coughs> Zinzalor, you follow Zinzalor? Yep. And he walks confidently in mere moments and I'll ask far him, shorter time than the time it took you to take in I'll ask him as we walk how would I strengthen my mental defenses if I'm trying to understand a difficult material that could potentially drive me insane I mean we wouldn't want to see a repeat of what happened last time I was here right that's how, true we would not want to see that repeated how would I make myself stronger mentally well, there or at are least ways. more resistant. More resistant. There are some <clears throat> some amulets which can be used for that purpose, but why would you seek such knowledge, which is so dangerous? Why does it intrigue you so? I just want to know, and if this magic can be used to put things to rest that would harm either the city or the library. I feel in dire in dire circumstances, they should potentially be used as a last resort, of course. But I know of such things. I cannot do them myself. I will speak to Miyazana. She may want to speak to you directly about it. Okay. But here we are at the door. I'll wait for Vernwick and be on my way. Thank you. And he kind of walks inward. Yeah. And I'll turn the corner. And don't hear him. 
few minutes later, you find Vrinwick coming out, uh, being led by Zinzalor. Uh, they're talking animately. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like they're talking about uh, mazes. Okay. And Vrinwick is kind of fascinated by the place that they're in. Um, and Zinzalor seems to be explaining that um, the path of Mano uh, Mimazani is not straight. It travels in ways that you cannot <laughs> imagine until you can. So I overhear this. Yep. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's like an important sentence, so. Uh, and then he uh, <coughs> bids you good night. Runwick leads you back through the passage. Okay. Uh, sneaking a couple of times past some guards who are dutifully patrolling. You now see that there are three guards in the patrol mm -hmm. that are passing through. You return back to your, your room. And then a week later, you're summoned from your room I will by a guard pick up Emerald's tobacco though yep I'll just say like I'm here to investigate the remains of what the, the thing that happened the explosion from last time because science... uh, make a persuasion roll as the as the the assistant is out front once again during the day unless you are going at a different time or I'm going when there's nobody there okay the office is locked do I know where the key is would it be like in the assistant yeah desk? Adrian has it the assistant okay. may have a key as well. well I'll, first of all, like before bothering Adrian, I'll look in the assistant's desk. In the assistant's desk. Okay. Uh, make a, a sleight of hand roll. Eleven. Okay. You wrench open this, the assistant's desk and start rummaging through the papers that are there. Mostly seems to be blank paper, quills, ink. There's an appointment schedule, which is mostly previous dates that are crossed out. There's a few dates up in the future. There's a date for two weeks from now. What is it? It has your name on it. Uh, it would be corresponding when, when he asked you to come yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you don't find a key, though. Okay. What about the other side of the desk? Like, the other that, doors? That's basically the whole desk you're okay. looking through. And you're finding not much, there's not much kept in the desk itself. Under the rug? Uh, you pull up, or you try to pull up the rug, you find that it's this massive rug which spans the entire hallway. Um, okay. Now, so this, there'd be like a <coughs> kind of like one of those chair protector rugs like we have at the office, but I guess not. No, not really. So I will go see Adrian. Okay. Uh, Adrian is uh, listening to a report from a couple of his uh, guards. Basically, they have nothing to report. He dismisses them when he sees you come in and waves you to sit down on his desk. So, so I uh, managed to speak with uh, Emerald. How is he? He's good. He's asked me to retrieve his uh, tobacco and his pipe, and I tried going into his office, but it's locked. Do you have the key? And would you mind accompanying me to his office? Because I realize I can't be walking alone. Uh, yes, a good idea. Um, do I have to assign a personal guard to you? Is Prina still there? And She's with me, yeah. Yeah, you can look down. She's, she's sleeping in the pouch. Um, can you bring her forth for me, please? Go away. <laughs> <laughs> your, your skills are needed. And what? Your skills are needed. I have almost defeated the Demogorgon. <laughs> <laughs> She's holding a tiny little <laughs> bottle of booze. You can defeat him later. <clears throat> you can defeat him later. Huh? What? And their eyes kind Wake of shoot open. Oh! Oh, that wasn't... No, you she were dreaming. She grabs for her sword. Okay, alright. And flies outward. Kind of see there's little bags under her eyes. She's kind of... Oh, we're out oh of the Mr. Cold. Bright Rock. Hello. Can I get you to do something for me? And she printed looks up at you like, should I? Sure. Hold out your hand. Actually, she boops at me on the nose usually to verify <laughs> if I'm me. If oh. you don't mind, Prina. Can you just verify that I am actually Zakis and not a and not a doppelganger? He's not a doppelganger. What's a doppelganger? It's a shape. Sh I'll explain in scientific detail what a doppelganger is. It's a shape shape shifting organism that'll like take the space of somebody. We've just had an as you know Bob moment for the uh, yeah. Until somebody <laughs> tells game. you to shut up, basically. Yeah, Adrian's like, it, it's a shape shifter. Oh, okay. Adrian just wants to make sure I'm not a shape shifter. Just drag your blade across his hand. That's all I ask. 
Wait, what? And that, she's like, mm -hmm. that's okay. a Vrindley so, thing. Whip. <laughs> or do you have the gem? So I'll just wait until Prina okay. like. Uh, Prina, it's like confused. Looks up at you for verification. Just do it. Okay. She pulls out her tiny little sword, swoop, kind of cuts across your hand. It stings. It's not really a deep cut. It just sort of stings. It would be one hit point worth of damage. It's like a paper cut. <laughs> Finger falls off. Don't, don't, worry about, don't worry about tracking the one hit point of damage. Um, but it does kind of sting. Um, and Prina kind of, I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. Okay. He asked me to. I know. It's okay. And Adrian uh, from behind pulls the orb that he was holding on to. Oh, cool. The one that glows. And he, he touches it to the blood. Hmm. I could have just put my hand on there, you know? I don't think so. Really? Is that the one Vrindrick Vrind was using? Oh, no. This is the orb that he has. The, mm -hmm. the okay. truth orb. I just didn't remember it, like, needing blood before. The one that before. reacted <laughs> weird to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been trying something different. A different protocol. Uh -huh. Given based on what Vrindrick had showed us. I wanted to make sure. Try it on something I felt was probably going to be negative. But thank you for now. No problem. Now, shall we go? Yes. Uh, and he leads you down mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. the office, pulls out a key ring that he has mm -hmm. with these ornamented keys that he's, he's been using, uh, turns it in a lock, opens it up. The office is still a little bit of a mess. No one's been in there since, uh, since the Emerald came back. You easily find the uh, pipe and the uh, pipe weed there, okay. resting upon a book. Okay. Do you look at the book? Just a sec. <laughs> Save. What is it? What's the title of the book? Ah. There's no title on the book. Damn. What about on the spine of the book? Nope. It looks like a, uh, a fairly thick book, rough pages, paper. Uh, it's got a leather cover on it, uh, multiple little like extra spines to hold it tight. Okay. It's uh, we got a clasp upon it. I'll tell to Adrian. Do you know what that book is? No. Probably something important. Should I open it? Adrian stands there and he wants to know what's in the I'm not going to let him. <laughs> is that it? You just needed to grab the pipe and pipe weed, right? Yes. Okay, let's just go. Wondering if I should open the book. <laughs> Why? Curiosity, I guess. Anyway, I can always ask him later. I do have another meeting with him. That's nice. I'll I'm tell you. I'm trying to arrange one myself, but I've been put off by his assistant. You can tell the the annoyance in his voice. Well, I was uh, I was looking for this key before I went to you. The assistant's book is in her desk. If you just scribbled your name in the book, I'm sure it would be valid. I don't think that would be proper. Why not? Because it wouldn't be proper. <laughs> so yourself. I can ask him to speak with you as quickly as possible when I see him then. I'd appreciate that. Will now, do. can we go? Yes. All right. He closes up the door behind you. He survived the wisdom safe. <laughs> Adrian was there, like... <laughs> he would have known. All right. <laughs> um, and you go back to your... Your, uh, yeah. your room. Um... As I was saying, a little week later, you do get. Can a I try to like a little bit of his weed? <laughs> you can certainly have some if you want. How much is there? Like, would he notice? There's uh, like a it's tiny basically bit? A, a, a pouch about that big. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty full, uh, okay. and then the pipe is one of those long, thin pipes. It is a very pipes. small, yeah, a very small bowl on the other end. Okay. You certainly can try it if you want. I'll try a little bit. Has Lucas ever I mean, smoked before? <laughs> Probably. I mean, he's been a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> he's been a teenager. <laughs> All right. But uh, Emerald did say I had to try it. I mean, well, not had to, but it's like, you haven't no, really tried he it. Did, he did suggest it was a great thing. Yeah, so All right. maybe it was a hint, so I'll try okay. a little bit. Okay. Um, it, it's a little, you're not used to it because you don't regularly smoke the pipe, so it takes you a little, little time to do it. Do you have a prestidigitation? No. No, oh, okay. Because I snuck. So you have to do it the, the old-fashioned way, basically, yeah. with a uh, match. Uh, and uh, it causes you to cough when you first drink, uh, breathe it in. Make constitution saving throw. Fuck. Two. Okay. Well, four. Uh, you, you, you take a pull on it, kind of like 
You know, this is kind of <laughs> smoky and something to it. It's kind of sweet. So you take another pull. And then um, you feel almost no sensation whatsoever. The edges of your body go, go a little bit numb and warm. <laughs> and you feel, you feel happy. You feel relaxed. You feel as if nothing uh, uh, is, a, is of concern. Dude, and the la that lasts, where's my body? <laughs> that lasts for about eight hours <laughs> off of that particular pole. That was after the yeah right yeah it was after the teleportation yeah. circle. Yeah, um, but and you find it through. you find it very very potent and very very relaxing. Um, you also kind of notice that um, there was a little bit of, of leftover uh, mark on your hand mm -hmm. from where Prina had uh, cut you. Yeah, that seals. Okay, as if there's no no scar whatsoever. Um, and then you kind of flip the bag over and uh, uh, find a... Uh, Wait, does that eight hours count as a long rest? Uh, no. Damn it. <laughs> no. Um, so you will have your schedule adjusted by one day. Okay. Because you will not have studied that day. Yeah, it just means he what goes week into is the first. This? You had one week left, now you get six days left. Where's my page? Um, as you get summoned a week later, as I've tried to say three times, uh, by two guards that come to your door okay. and say that there is someone at the front gate talking or asking about you. It sounds urgent. I forget I will, exactly the words. I will go to the front gate. And at that point, you see the bloodied, but still standing form at that point of Clark at the front gates with a very bloodied and not standing form uh, beside him. Do I someone, recognize Somewhat grayish and somewhat formless, as you see the dead body of a doppelganger. <sighs> to Adrian's office right now. <laughs> okay, you open up the gates, you start marching off, and you hear this <laughs> as Clark collapses on the snow behind you. <laughs> Medicine check. Yeah. Have the orc brought with me. 12 plus, I'm pretty sure that's a 5. Yeah, he's bleeding badly. He's got 17. several several arrow uh, uh, shafts. The broken shafts are still in his back. But with a 17, can I like stabilize him somehow? Or? Uh, do you have a medical kit? No. Probably is the I problem. I only read about medical kits in a book. The, the, problem, <laughs> the problem probably is the several arrows that are... Uh, yes, I, I figured that one out. <laughs> so you, you'll call for aid. I will call for guards. Right. And uh, Holmara, I think we described it last time, Holmara actually comes out because she's well trained in this yeah. uh, with a med kit. Um... Uh, Knocks him out. <laughs> essentially. When you come to... I can give you some of the weed. The second time? <laughs> the second time? This would be the third time now? Yeah, something like that. Should I get him to smoke some of Emerald's tobacco? You can certainly try it. What are you doing with him? Hmm? I'm taking him to... Well, he's unconscious and, and oh, okay. down near death. Where are you putting him? Well, I want to make sure he's stabilized. First, like, is there, is there <coughs> anyone stabilizing him? Stick him in the shed. He's not dying anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man. You guys Does anybody have a potion? No healers around. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'll ask Almara if she you're has in a potion. Town <laughs> if what, sir? If she has a potion. Uh, yeah, I think I still have one or two. How much? How much what? I've got one or two. I'll, I'll pay for it. If you give him the potion, how much does it cost? Uh, or will you do it for the good of the city? Buy one for me later. Okay. Then she goes off and fetches a healing potion, feeds it to you. And you come conscious. Um, still feeling awful because you still have several arrows sticking out of you because yeah. nobody's bothered with those. But at least you're conscious. Uh, the guards are, are there like an have dragged the body here? in from the outside. Um, and actually... Um, it's a library. It's probably no. But there's guards. Surely there, there must were, be like a hospital. Let's see. One of the guards went down because he got caught outside. Oh, three of them went down. Um, one of them got dragged back in, I think. Yeah. He wasn't dying. Not yeah, um, so they've sent for reinforcements. You see Adrian running with two guards behind him, towards the front gate. He arrives. He arranges for a couple of the other guards to pull the other guards in. They set up a bit <coughs> of a triage in Holmara's era area um, as some of the others come out. Okay. Um, you see uh, Milda come out actually, uh, as she attempts to do some of her healing as well. Good. So, inside that area. Adrian O'Mara there, you're there. Uh, the other guards are kind of busy with uh, attending to the other guards as well as 
they have taken the body of the changeling, they've thrown it in one of the, the prisons they've used, or one of the, the jail boxes mm. they have. And it's dead, correct? Uh, well, they weren't really quite sure. It was split. split it was okay. split from the shoulder <laughs> all forget, the way down. I forget how that the pelvis. Stuff. But they're not taking any 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 cautions. They feel like they could still be tricked, so they are actually locking it up. Um, and Adrian is is kind of looking at you in particular. He needs medical attention. Uh, well, he's being seen to right now by uh, by Milda, who's actually there. She's seen to the other guards. Like the arrow was like. Yeah, uh, actually, Homara is taking the arrows out. I seem to recall that we started yeah, that. Yeah, that, that killed where, him. Where, uh, yeah. <laughs> then it got better. Yeah. Um, it got better. And then it went down again. Yeah. And she of, went, oh shit. Kind of with Homara <laughs> and Milda there with like, pull, healing word. Pull, healing word. Pull, healing word. Uh, as you kind of come to consciousness at a certain point, uh, starting to get bandaged. They pulled off your, your, your clothes and your armor to, to treat you. It's a little chilly in here, but they do have a a stove in the corner and Adrian's asking so what the hell just happened who is that thing I'm in the room too right yeah okay uh it's one of those things yes the doppelganger <laughs> yeah. I won't go into the scientific explanation sure that it can make faces I know what a doppelganger is but who was this one um Cantor Cantor's sidekick Peter Cantor yeah that's not good that's not good at all no does what do we? What about Alistair? I got That's to kill him. What I was wondering. Alistair? Well, not really. He took his form before he died. He it took did. Alistair's form. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if he's done that before. Does Alistair know? I never killed a counselor before. What cool. if Alistair <laughs> is a counselor? No, Alistair is, is a counselor. Fuck. It, doppelganger. Mm. Words that ends with er. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be very bad. Yes. Do you have any evidence of that? Well, one of your guards, if he lives, might be able to tell you. Tell me what? What he looked like when I slain him. <laughs> but do you think he is Alistair, or that that was Alistair? There could be multiple of them. If Even if he killed this one, Alistair could be another one. How many would there be? I've Who seen knows? them both There's together, Peter and Alistair. I would imagine Peter is either locked up or in a ditch somewhere. Have I ever met? That's how I'd do it. Have I ever met Peter before? Uh, when they say assistant, and you would have given some description of what he looked like, oh. you've seen him there, but you've never noted him before. Okay, so ascending uh, wouldn't really work. Uh, you don't know. Yeah, I've never spoken to him directly. Okay. Basically, for the last time you probably would have seen him was the big celebration at Feston when you were being being feted. Okay. He would have been the one that was basically behind the scenes making sure everything goes. You would have seen him making runs and errands. Um, so you'd know him on sight, but you, okay. you'd probably, Can basically. You do a thing? Yes. I need you to send a message. To who? Vazo the Sage. He's a friend of mine. You've never met him. I was in, briefly in the same tavern before the thing burst through the door, so I've seen him for a few seconds. You've never met him. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who he is. Okay, well, you don't have to use magic. Just get him a message, please. That's Who's Vazo? I don't know. Who is Buzzer? He's a wise person who hangs out at the Elegant Pony occasionally. I'd love to meet him, but I can definitely send him a letter. If you bring him here and uh, you two converse, I'm sure you'll come to some sort of conclusion as to Peter. Well, hang on now. I don't want any more people coming in here. Could we not have this meeting somewhere else? With sure. Adrian speaking. Could we way. have it at the Elegant Pony? Even though we might get attacked by the shadows. Oh, well, sure. Can you arrange this meeting, or do you still want me to send in the letter? No, we can just show up. That's fine. You're not going anywhere, says Milda. You need to rest and not move anywhere and not let any of our work just go to go to waste. Doctor's orders. You'll probably have to come here. All right. I'll write him a letter real quick. It's going to take, like, I don't know, 30... Well, not 30 minutes, but it's, like, between, like... Me so starting to write it, finishing How is the letter it. being delivered? Is the mail system still working? Uh, there's not really a mail system. There's a courier system. You probably would just send it to the elegant pony. Yeah. But yeah. that might take a few days, and it's snowy, mm -hmm. and it's... <gasps> well, unless you know his exact address, it's pretty much what you're stuck with. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, unless he has an address. I mean, at, yeah. at this point, yeah. for for Courier, for example, the, probably their best bet is to ask one of the guards or to get yeah. Adrian to take one of the guards. Yeah, I'll do that. Do you have his address? Yeah, it's over there. I think we've been there before. Yeah. Yeah, with me. So I write a letter, and what do you want me to ask specifically? Ah, just uh, ask for an audience. Tell them right. Clark is involved. So come to the library door, ask for a Clark. They will not know a Clark. So no, ask. just tell him I'm involved. He'll make his way in. It'll be fine. Clark is involved. <sighs> ask for Zagus. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm letting all the sketch people in, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the yeah, so one of the guards take runs off to deliver the letter. Yeah. Um, it is a little later in the evening. Um, he comes back and says, "I dropped the letter off. I, I, they said they'd pass it on." Okay. Um, and Bazo was like B A Z O, right? B O Z Z O. Okay. Like bozo, but with an extra Z. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what that's what makes him not a, not a bozo. Exactly. It's the extra Z. It's all the extra Z. Yeah. I can give you his full name if you want. <laughs> it's like Rinse Wind the Wizard <laughs> with two Zs. He's a wizard. So while you're in, I'm assuming you're like recovering and sure. you're by yourself. Are you? It's awful lonely. Are you gonna put him in a room? Because they don't generally <laughs> take in strangers and put them in rooms. Okay. He can probably just chill in my room. I mean, there's a couch. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's a couch. Um, Adrian uh, turns to you. If you're going to take responsibility for him, I'll place extra guards around your room, though. No worries. Okay. He will not cause any trouble. Uh, thank so. you, Holmara. As he turns to uh, the the, the chief of a, chief of acquisitions, who's just been kind of silently sitting back, taking all this in. Let me know uh-huh. how much I owe you for the potion. Was that a large or a small or a medium? <laughs> that was a basic potion. Okay. You smell some weed smoke in the room. <laughs> you got my things? Yes, they are. I'll pull out the things that I hid poorly. So back in the room, room I'm yeah. assuming, yeah. Can you grab... Uh, Printer pops out of your pocket and looks, sees you and then kind of uh, run, uh, flies over and, and hugs your nose. She does that. It's the one with the other fine. stuff. Yes. Ooh. He's cleaning his things right now. You smell like blood. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a shower. I got a promotion. I now have my own washroom. You can kind of feel her alight on your shoulder and then sort of climbing down the back of your shoulder, uh, poking. Hey, there's holes back here. Shh, yeah, don't, watch, don't poke at those. Yeah, watch those. Uh, if you reach into my bag and grab the bottle with the the cross topper on it. Reach into bag. This one? Uh, does it have a skull on it? Yes. Uh, not that one. The one with the cross on the top. Oh, the it's other like, cross. It's like three corks in one. Three corks in one. Yeah, you'll you'll know it by feel. I'm like, I'm expecting a trap right now. <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. Really? No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good to see the look on your face. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's what I figured. So I'll so three corks. Okay. Yeah. I'll pull that one out. Uh, you can keep that. That's from me. Uh, for what the is one, it? For the one you bought. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I do have a monthly salary. You saved my life. Well, well, of course. But thank you for it. No problem. All right. You are a friend. Good. So uh, who's okay? So uh, right, I'll give that to Homer later. Yeah. Consider all the things paid. Okay. Who's this Bazo person? He's a uh, a fan of the theater. That tells me nothing. There were hundred. There were hundreds of people at that uh, audience who were fans of the theater. Yeah. I like the theater. See, 101. None of, none of them bought What's you tickets. What's a theater? <laughs> what? None of them Quite. bought you tickets. Oh. Extra ticket, yes. Hmm. Why would he want me there? You know stuff. I kind of imagine Print is kind of like me right now, perched up somewhere just watching this back mm-hmm. and forth like a tennis match. <laughs> well, of course I know things that were in the library. <laughs> sure. What? You know about those squirrely things that run fast? Squirrely things. And impersonate people. Yes, the doppelgangers. Yeah. So this one was assuming the form so, of Peter so Cantor. Bazo might want to know what you know about those things. Well, I read it in exchange, book. maybe he might share some information with Peter. I don't know. I was just tasked <coughs> to track him down. To track Peter down? Yeah. Okay. So what does this person do for a living? Uh, I think he begs for I'm money. I'm not going to judge, so 
the opium. <laughs> thanks for money. I think he begs for money. Okay. I mean, I don't think he needs to beg. I think people just give him money anyway. That sounds interesting. <laughs> I look forward to meeting this person. Sure. Is he the one that I was... When I ran into the bar and you were with somebody? Mm-hmm. That could be him. Right, before the shadows attacked. Sure. Okay. So what kind of... He just wants information... Everything I know about doppelgangers, basically. No. I just want you two to talk, figure shit out, so I can... Know who on. to stab. Yeah. Yes. W will you be there in case he decides to stab me? I don't think he'll talk to you without me being there. Okay, well that's perfect. Please do not let him stab me. I can't guarantee that. Well, but I mean, if he's going to stab you, he might as well stab me while he's at it. So. Well, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Is there anything I should bring to prepare for this discussion? Uh, a bit of coin for a drink? I have not ample coin, but I can certainly... I wouldn't take... bring anything you value. Just bring <clears throat> coin. Right. You don't need a lot. I can do that. So I'll take this Tony, last book Tony and... Tony librarian. Uh, total change of topic. If you were to hide a book <laughs> yeah. in this room... This room? Where would you hide it? Uh, Clark would like to use his uh, roguely backgrounds to, to <laughs> approximate a place where he would hide it. Uh, make a <laughs> uh, sleight of hand roll. Sure. Um, That's not much better than he rolled. Nine. He rolled. Nine. I think he rolled an eleven. Clark will turn around, roll over in his bed, ow, and then roll back into place and say, I don't know, the rafters. Are the rafters? Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. A, I'd put it up there. The, the ducks? <clears throat> well, Vrindwick goes in there all no, the, the time. No, the rafters. And they're just the, the support beams across okay. the ceilings. Right. Are they are they the same width as a book? Depends on the book. Some of the books are very large. Or are they the same width as the Zahalas and uh, the Tome of Oral book? Uh, let's see. Isn't the Zahalas one a scroll? No, that was uh, okay. something, something madness. <laughs> something, something madness. I'll let you know I'm not in my right mind right now, but more often than not, people don't look up. Uh, the tome would fit there. The tome of oral would fit there. It's a standard-sized book. Okay. It's usually where I come from. Um, I believe the Zahalas book is a large stone slate-covered book. It was it was a leather, probably one skin. One of those is really big, uh, yeah. That's not the one. Uh... I've got to refresh my set of books, too, because I think you guys have found about 80% of them. Uh, there it is. Oh, it was the first one. Huh. Uh, <laughs> actually, that's the one with the cloth cover. And it has 87 pages, and that means... Uh, yes, it's and its uh, cover appears oiled and pristine. So it's yeah. actually, uh, actually a rel relatively small book as well. So, so I could probably have hide that one in plain sight. Here's the problem. What? Uh, you're going to have to remember. Who do you think I am? I remember everything. This is my character speaking, not me. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I am? Clark, Clark's not going to comment. <laughs> All right, so you take a rest. Yeah. Um, yeah. The next day... Uh, we both take a rest? Yeah. Okay. Is that a full rest? Spells yeah. back. Is that all my points? That's, that's exactly Sweet. it. It's because the couch is perfect for all the ability. recovering all the health. The couch is eating you. Do not come to your rescue. One of the weird things about D&D, &D, which always kind of weirded me out a bit. I'll today. take it. A good rest cures all wounds. Oh, I got cancer. Just go to bed. No, actually, that's right, a disease. Oh, right, yeah. It's not a wound. <laughs> as far as D&D &D is concerned, it's a disease. <laughs> um... Clark will gear up like he's going to battle again. Okay. And then put the cloak over that so it looks a little less low-key. The, the clothing's going to need a little bit of stitching and repairing because That's fine. there's, there's the numerous holes. arrow holes on them. He'll wear, he'll wear the holes proudly. It's uh, where kind did of I, air conditioned now. Where did I hide, where did I hide the uh, Zahalas book, though? Wherever did you Have you already hide? forgotten? <laughs> no, I never, like... Did I actually put it there? Or? I thought you said you did. I was... Was Wasn't one like, of the things you said you have to remember where you put the book? <laughs> it was one of those questions in theory, but I guess we went with it. But yeah, I'll just put it... I'm I mean, gonna, you can choose to not do it there, but ne that's... Next time I'm going to bump the wisdom, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> where would nobody look? I know. Up. 
No, the Tome of, the tome of Oral is in the rafters. You'd need I, a ladder to put it up there. Or some other way of hovering that high. Can I just jump on the bed? Uh, jump. The bread's not really springy as such. Vernerick said the otherwise. <laughs> uh, Vernerick's a lot smaller than you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Um, and good wood can give you a spring if you only weigh 40 pounds. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I have my own washroom now. So in the washroom next to the toilet, there's like a little stand with the multiple shelves. Okay. With magazines. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just kind of like hide I mean, Not magazines. But... Hide, hide it amongst the play elves. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be magazines, but there would be thin folios. Yeah. And... Refuse or something. I don't know. I'll put yeah, it in have, the paperwork. You have, you have piles of refuse in your bathroom. <laughs> reviews. You, you might want to clean that up. R e v u i s. It's like reviews. Re- oh, yeah. reviews. <laughs> it was a French like pronunciation. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> it makes a little more sense. Yeah, <laughs> reviews. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is this? Is, is you you so you write up the reviews of the books that you write? No, it's like reviews. And then they're like, worthless, so you put them in the bathroom, so the paper right there handy. Is that what them, is that what I'm getting no. here? No, it's the French word. Whatever, it's magazine. like ma- magazine, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little, but, but there's no magazines. It's not newspapers. Uh, news. There's no newspaper because there's no mass print yet. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. Damn it, your book. There's it's books and scrolls and. Yep. There's one scribe who does one book every three weeks. Okay, Maybe. so I won't put it. Well, in there the are motion. town criers. You actually. Yeah, you can hear it before you before. read it. I will just. Well, if it's a small book, if I leave it under the mattress and, and the tome of, and the tome of oral isn't there, then hopefully it should be okay. Yeah. So it's just gonna stay under the mattress. Okay. I'm sure that'd be fine. Yeah. I hope. So. Okay. I mean, if I sleep with a <laughs> cursed book under my pillow, what could possibly go wrong? Ah, exactly. <laughs> um, I do get all my spells back, right? <laughs> yeah, you've got a long rest. You've got a long rest. Clark, Clark will take him to the elegant pony. Yes. Okay. When when appropriate. Okay. That's a week from now, right? I, I don't want to miss my appointment with Emerald. But you get a response the next day that uh, basically there's a couple of days that he has some things to finish. Sure. But then invites you to <coughs> join him at the Elegant Pony. Okay. okay. Uh, and then you do join him at the Elegant Pony. Uh, where is uh, where is uh, Elzera staying, by the way? Um, I would have probably found myself... Um, I, I would ask where Kosh was staying and stayed with... Okay. Uh, probably them or uh, Ferendra. Okay. Uh, Ferendra does offer. Um, she's actually got quite fairly generous apartments because she's the yeah. working with uh, Alexia. So she can take, actually, she can take all of you there. Um, and it's a, kind of an open plan place. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the in a couple of days, um, you go to the Elegant Pony, a place you've been a number of times. This is Emron's preferred space when he comes mm-hmm. into town as well. Um, and you see the person you'd seen only briefly, because last time you saw him, you saw him in the corner of the room, then he ran for the back door. Uh, but Boz of the stage in much more of his, uh, his uh, comfort environment. Okay. This gnome standing up upon the table, uh, it, uh, speaking to, to uh, a crowd of people. Uh, he sees uh, Clark, he sees you, and kind of, as, as a natural gesture, you do see the extra little come forward uh, as part of it, and trying to be subtle about it. Sure. I'll follow Clark. Um, Clark will get three... Nice ales and bring them to a table somewhere nearby. Okay. Did you need coin for that? You told me to bring coin. Yeah. I'll give you coin. So that's uh, like I'm good. Don't right. worry about it. Okay. Um, after a few minutes, um, Bazo kind of uh, 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 bows down to the crowd. There's a bit of a little applause. Um, some coin is put into a, a, a bag that's at his feet. He thanks everybody effusively, and then. Uh, with the bag kind of tucked away very quickly, comes over to your table. So what do I notice about Bazo like while he was doing that? Do I just figure out he's like giving advice to people for money? Or? Um, that seems to be the, the, the his trick. That's the thing that he does. It, he is giving advice. The 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 few bits you heard, um, one was on love advice, uh, about you know what is it appropriate in the middle of a uh, a uh, starvation to try to take somebody out for a view a walk because I can't afford to take us out to food. Uh, there's another one on, uh, uh, my wife is starting to complain about keeping the chickens inside, but I'm afraid if I put them in the coop, they'll all freeze and die. Uh, you know, strange, just random strange questions, and he seems to have an answer for just about everything. Okay. I kind of admire that. Um, but then he comes over to your table, uh, sits down, grabs one of the the mugs immediately, and just hauls it back. 
uh, in his smaller form, in his smaller hands, it seems much, much larger, but seems no less enthusiastically drunk. Um, you can tell, um, which you'd probably notice a little bit because you've been out a little bit more, it's not the premier beer. They are definitely running on lower and lower drags. It's not quite the screech you had last time you went out. Uh, it seems like they did. They do have a little bit more in stock, but not much. Or at least they they hit the last barrel or something. Decided to finally crack it. I'll introduce the two. Okay. Now we'll go and fast forward on this particular okay. conversation. I'd love to role play every sure. single one of these. It's fun, but no um, to kind of speed things along, so we'll come to a crescendo here. Uh, what is it you are looking to say or ask? And what is it you, you're looking for uh, I just to offer? Like I'll mention that Clark wanted to know, or Clark said that he wanted to know more about doppelgangers. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can tell you all I know. Okay. So do you share openly what you know? How many people are listening? Uh, you're kind of off to one side in the room, and uh, the room is fairly sparse now that Bozzo has, has stopped uh, his performance. So I'll tell him... I'm assuming he knows already about the whole, like, Peter Cantor thing, like, being a doppelganger. He actually stops you and says, assume I don't know anything. It's easier that way. Well, of course, then you get to profit more while I lose everything. Well, not everything, but, you know. Oh, don't worry. I'll assume you know nothing after you're done. He's very discreet. Well, yes, I, I've already noticed this. You feel a certain confidence radiating from him, but also a friendly confidence? The tiny emerald on your shoulder says, Tell them everything! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs One the tiny emerald on their shoulder. <laughs> so again, is there, are there things you're holding back or when... I'm not really holding anything back, but... Okay. I'll ask him for answers. Tenor, I'll ask him for answers and his own theories in exchange mm -hmm. for what I know. So we can yep. both put together the piece yep. of the puzzle. And, and I, I, again, he's kind of prompting <laughs> to find out what you know first. <laughs> yeah so that he won't repeat anything you already know. Okay. Um, but then he starts to speak, and you start to realize that he's had a lot more pieces than he's told you. Um, there were a few other things that he'd been putting together, but he didn't have the doppelganger connections, the thing he missed entirely, because he's not dealt with them before, and or he didn't know he hadn't he had dealt with them before. He knew something was, was, was going on that was weird. Um, since that night, Peter has not been seen. He's had people looking for him. They have not seen him. Uh, Alistair has been seen. Uh, and Alistair has started to um, create a, a sort of a small search team because he's concerned that Peter is missing because Peter has been missing. Mm -hmm. uh, this has probably been just a few days, so it's not very much, but that, that would have started a day ago. Um, you get the impression, as Bazo was talking, that, that um, he indirectly may have influenced that situation in... Uh, or rather he had wanted to see he wanted to wait before talking to see what Alistair's response would be wait what? because if Alistair had quietly said nothing about Peter being missing that would have been one line of evidence the fact that Peter uh, that the day after Peter went missing and he didn't show up for work Alistair started to get people involved the Reeve was involved uh, as you know Alistair has a, a particular connection to the Reeve um, but also some of his own mercenaries kind of been formed into it it's what, what Basel would refer to as the proper response. Yeah, so it's... Which Alistair, leads, right now, anyway, is probably not a doppelganger. Leads to probably not a doppelganger. May not have known. Probably didn't know. Because um, he wouldn't draw attention to that if he did. I'll tell him also about the doppelganger that was there before. Several months ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've been trying to infiltrate the library for some time. And probably even that's knows. what they would have been doing again this time. Again, I don't want to go into real time here too much, but he does kind of re confirm that theory that uh, that would make sense based on some of the things he's seen happening. Um, and uh, uh, he's concerned because he doesn't know how deep it goes. Some of the stuff he's found suggests that Alistair, and this is the stuff that you've been finding, Alistair, through Lord Fendelroy, had been hoarding food. Where? Uh there's a couple of different warehouses that are attached to it. They're not really sure exactly which one has it. And some, and they haven't been able to break in and search those warehouses just yet. Um, but uh, the, the question is why? Um, how, what does Alistair actually know? Because it was all done in his name. 
but was Alistair actually the person who did it? And when you confirm that the thing also took on Alistair's form, he starts to think, well, maybe this one had been going around and using Alistair's goodwill and good, good graces uh, to make sure all this stuff happened. So, <coughs> in the end, he says, we have, you have to talk to Alistair. I will. Hopefully, I, it'll be the correct Alistair in a, is it just me or is, is anybody else alarmed about the increasing guard and mercenary presence across the entire city? Yes and no. It makes a lot of my business prospects harder to manage, mm -hmm. but I find that they're not necessarily the most uninfluenceable of mm. law enforcement. That's good. They're mercs. Yeah, money. They're um, independent contractors who are opportunistic. Uh, speaking of mercenaries... Jack Grant. What became of him? Do, do you know, or have you heard anything about him? Or? Grant? Yes, Jack. He was traveling with us in a... in a queen. What's he look like? I'll give him a brief description of Jack. He was one of the NPCs traveling with us. Does it look yeah. like the Jack who was hired by Fiddleroy? Uh, remind me what context, because there was a couple things that He happened. was a criminal mm -hmm. first. And mm -hmm. then he wound up being the one of the main guards at the Finland Royce. Ah, uh, no, that okay. was an older gentleman. Okay. Yeah. You you would know who he's talking about because it's the that's Jack. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. You would you that's, would have recognized. Oh, yeah, you would have recognized him there. I know that Jack <laughs> has appeared in a couple places. Was I was like, which which context do you mean? Okay. No, that that's definitely a different Jack. Yeah. Never mind. Thank <clears> you. Okay. So, the Alice, <laughs> the Alistair ordering. More mercenaries and more guards. Is is it the doppelganger or is it Alistair? I guess I, I think that's something you're going to have to ask Alistair. Yes, I can't be involved in that conversation mm. for numerous reasons. Clark can, uh, as can you. We were on the team I'd, that I'd, ra I'd rather not, but I'll be there to back you up. He well, we we you. were all invited to the ceremony. Yeah, yeah. I'm just he'll recognize you. I probably won't do a lot of the talking. Talking, yes. I'll have to read a book on talking. Is there any sort of Without getting um, slapped. mystical questions you have that our friend might be able to help you with? <coughs> oh, I, I'm sure I'd love to have an extended conversation with you about a whole bunch of things. What, what but, is uh, your business exactly? I've seen you giving out advice, great advice. You probably shouldn't ask account. those kind of questions. Yeah. But it's all right. It's all right. My business is on knowing things and making sure the people who need to know them know them. Knowing things, knowing things is also something I am into. Oh, yes, I know. I'm glad we'll go get another round of drinks. <laughs> you know. Yes. You do have a lot of interesting books there. Now, most of the information I deal with is in current terms, not in terms of the older days, but uh, there might be a few things I'd like to look up from time to time. You'd like a pass to the library? Oh, uh, from time to time, yes. I'm sure I can be of assistance to you. I know a lot of things that uh, won't be written down in any books. Yes, that's what I was thinking. I can see I'm not exactly sure what the process is to obtain a position or a pass at the library. I can ask around, definitely, and I will. Oh, uh, discreetly, oh. please. It's an yes. arduous process from what I've heard. My Clark family... will hand out the booze and look at Zacchaeus and say, Remember your valuables. What? Remember to... Never mind. <laughs> like put money on the table? No. What? Only bring the things you would like to spend. My time? Sure. Maybe a little bit of coin for the privilege. Well, yes, that's what I was saying. I'm glad you didn't bring anything else. I didn't. Wink. <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I think it'd be nice if uh, giving Nax a bit of a clue here. Yeah. I'm a little yeah. clueless myself. Clark, Clark is on? suggesting you don't give too much away about the 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 uh, your business and the library's business what to, I, to a total stranger. What I will say is make an insight check, and that's what you're you're looking to figure out if if uh, if uh, Zach is. Let's see if it works. Mm, it's a, it's a two. 
too. Four total. Yeah, you're now as as Akis is having the, a difficulty understanding exactly what he means. Mm. He's it does sound like he's saying don't give away your money in all one place. Yeah, but what I was going to say to Bazo though was like, I. I not sure how I even got into my own position at the, at the library, but... Oh, your parents are quite influential. My, did you just read my thoughts? No. I'm no. fairly certain they... That I make it. it a practice to keep track of a lot of very important people. Your parents are doing pretty well for themselves. They are. And I was going to ask them how they went about it to help me get into the library, perhaps... Wouldn't the same that be method, an interesting question? Perhaps the same method could be used. Anyway, uh... In terms of work, how much do you pay? Depends I on the work, I suppose. But I don't think you'd be interested in the kind of work I generally have to offer. Clark will pull up the sacks and start sharpening it <laughs> at the table. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you you draw an attention from the other, the <laughs> other side of the room. As you look at me or at Bowser. As you looking at me or at Bowser. I'm going to draw attention. What? Clark starts sharpening a very sharp-looking dagger. Seems that our time is coming rapidly to an end. At least a day. But speak to Alistair quickly. Why? While there's still time to understand if he's... Wait, wait, wait. Quickly, like, deep. give me a deadline. Oh, I would say the next day or so. But I can't just get an audience with a counselor on the next day. Hmm. Maybe your parents can. I can. Really? Yeah, they won't like it. But but I have to keep my position at the library. That would be a problem. Otherwise, I'll be broke. Yeah, well. I won't be able to transcribe. Anyway. Now, if you excuse me, I have an appointment to be somewhere else. It was nice okay. to meet you, sir. We'll be in touch again. Oh, he shakes your hand vigorously. We'll be in touch again. Cheers, and Clank. Absolutely. Clark will leave. And I'll leave him some money because Clark told me to, so we'll... Clark! What should I leave on the table? What's a good tip? A, a few coins is... Okay, I'll leave like, how much is a few? Uh, I, half a handful. <laughs> numbers, give me numbers. It could be a handful for a halfling, a handful for an orc, a handful for... Consider your audience. How many would they want to take home today? Boss was kind of lingering, kind of waiting for the uh, end of this conversation. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll leave like half a handful of my handful. Sure. Get. How much gold was that, by the way, so I can like deduct it from issue? How it's much all... gold did you put down? <laughs> It's I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Half a handful, or... Four. Just pick a number. Yeah, I'll just leave, like, ten gold. Okay. <laughs> You're far too generous. We'll be talking again. Then he pockets it swiftly. As we Looking go, forward to it. As we breach the doorway outside mm -hmm. into the world, I would say, you left ten to twenty times that on the table. No, oh, I only so left ten know. gold. Not all valuables are measured in gold. What? I apologize right now for what you just did. I'm sorry. What did I do? I shouldn't have brought you. But what did I do? Nothing. We should get you back to your library. Who is he anyway? Because uh, if he likes to know things, I'm sure I can make money offering to read people's thoughts for him. Assuming I... my identity is not known. Would he be interested in this? This is never going to happen. Not, no. We're, we're going to take you home. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to finish healing up. Did he steal my valuables? We're going to grab our friends, and we're going to solve whatever the problem is, and then we're going to leave town. <laughs> I have things to do. It's fine. I have work to do. I'm just saying, that's my plan. I need to make a copy of my spell book. If you want to continue on the way you've been going, that's fine, but I need to solve the things and leave the town. Well, the way I've been going, what do you mean? What? We'll talk about this later, when I'm a little less agitated. But you were speaking calmly. You don't seem agitated. No, I'm not speaking as calmly as I'd like. But you are? Yep. What? It's a skill. I don't know. <laughs> Can it's you called just charisma. give me a hint of what I've left at the table? <sighs> you you brought me here. Can we get far enough away from people that there's... Yeah, a, you're there's in the street by now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, there's... You've, told, you've brought me here to tell them things about the doppelganger, and yeah, I did. Yeah, and you did. And then and then there was museum talk. and Museum talk, what? Magic talk. And, sorry, they're all full of books. I don't know. 
Um, the museum has statues, and I'll go in. Your in family, a and you confirmed who your parents were to but him. But he seemed to already know who my parents were. Sure. But you may be filling in gaps that he didn't have, or he didn't know he had. Well, I told him that if he wants to fill more gaps, yeah, he can probably I know, probably you let him right in the front door. I don't know what to tell you. What's so bad about him? He seems like a pleasant, like a pleasant fellow. Yep, that is the that is what most people think about him. Like I, I know he's probably got his little dark side. Little? <laughs> well, he is. Little, but... <laughs> Could you fill me in? People disappear with a word with him. Okay. Like forever. Yes, I've had a similar. Peter before. Cantor is probably lucky to be where he is right now. Dead? No. Disappeared. So you think he is the one responsible for Peter Cantor's death? No, not directly. For Terrell Hammer's death? No. For who's He's death, investigating exactly? the same way I've been investigating. The same way you've been investigating. It's just he So has... we should be working together. Maybe, a little bit. A collaboration. It happens often among scholars. You're halfway into the marriage bed with this guy. Into the what? Yeah. No, like, like player did not hear the term properly. The marriage bed. You're you're halfway into bed oh. with this guy, already, and we've I've only, only had spoken to him for twenty minutes. Ten gold in twenty minutes. If you, do you seriously think of me of a cheap whore? It's the. <laughs> There's some circles that I've prevented you from walking around in, just as a courtesy, because I like you. I'd rather Which, you not tread into them on your own. Circles. You mean, you mean there's, mul there's multiple circles? Sure. I mean, how many could there be? Well, I've heard of another one, but... Any hoodles. Uh, yeah, so... Let's come You mentioned this. gambling last time. Yes. <coughs> you love to gamble. Well, I've never gambled before, but... You certainly have tonight. And I would like to say that you lost, but I'm not even sure. So I might have won. It's hard to tell at this point. Thinking in riddles, I swear. I do so to protect you and me and our friends from a very uh, dark and depressing end. And premature. Describe it to Emran later. Emran will be very, very plain spoken about what. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. one thing I like about Emran. It's like two opposites of the same. So, so speaking of, of the later. Uh, you do drop uh, Zachus <laughs> off at the library. Are you staying at the library then? Uh, Are you going to take up the offer of the couch again? or mm -hmm. make If the, the offer... offer stands, I'll take it. Yeah, the offer stands. Okay. I want to know what, what's going on. Sure. So <laughs> the last uh, thing in here is I want to know the timeline on Amrun's return. What day was this, by the way? Oh. <laughs> we're, keeping that, this? we're keeping that vague well, for the moment. Uh, so I said Amrun would, would, should be back from the trip around the first week of month six okay uh, so he's pro at this point he would have been back already and then headed down just by himself with the accolades so he's back to the tour or back to the serene temple back to well uh the point that we're at with Emran right now is like the the beginning of the third week of month five okay um, so he stays in the queen for a few days then goes to the serene temple uh well, yeah, he'll well he drops off the the dwarf and the goblins. Uh, no, sorry, he dropped them off. The way yeah, down. on the way down. He, no, he goes straight back to Vator to okay. drop off the food, and okay. then he's there for like a day or so, and then heads right back down uh, because he has stuff to do at the temple. Okay, but so he needed to get the food back first. So you're only staying in Vator for a day, probably. Okay, and that day is in the sixth month. Uh, yeah, be around the beginning of the sixth month or the first week. Okay. Uh, of that is when he'd be able to get back. Now the only other calendar which is specific is yours, Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. So where does the where does the first week of the sixth month put you? Reading books. But how far from the end? Three weeks from the end. Three weeks from the three end. weeks in a day because I yeah well I was gonna read a book but yeah then I got the, high yeah he had one week <laughs> left in the he had one week left in the month okay when he finished. I'm trying to make the timeline work here. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I'm can just we just asking, say I got high and like it was on I, a work day? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go to work. The, I'm trying to make the timeline work here. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to synchronize the times. So, 
the uh, what I'm trying to figure out is when is and is Amrun going to be spending any time of a tour other than a turnaround day? He'd be spending a bit of time, uh, I imagine, just as they're they're getting the food out there. But he's going to be tur- he's going to be heading back as soon as he can. And is he staying there permanently afterwards? Well, he uh, his plan at that point is to head down to the Serene Temple, spend about a week. Uh, well, he goes to Aquain, gets some carpenters and other laborers to help fix up the place, heads back to the Serene Temple, spends about a week there training and fixing it up, and then he'll head back up to Vator. Okay, so another three weeks from now. Pretty much. He's probably going to end up being about a week late from what everyone else was doing to get together. But um, okay. cause he's I think we're going to have to resolve the week. timeline off off uh, off air just because it's getting it's getting a little bit picking out. I got to fix that later. So rather than continue this too much further, we're going to have to call it a close. There, we're close to seven thirty anyway. Um, so I don't get my my dramatic ending as I hope, but that's fine. We're mm-hmm. we're at a decent spot. You guys are ready to go to see Alistair. You're ready to. Uh, uh, well, Wait, you're, you're in Vitor right now, and we'll we'll figure out exactly where you're at at that point. How do we just waltz into Alistair's office, though? That's what you'll figure out next week. Now, next week there'll be another game. I will be away for two weeks at that at that point, because I want to have a week before and a week of the conference that I'm doing to actually get pre- prepped and then work the conference. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to be away those two two weekends. Um, we may have something else coming up because we've been talking potentially about doing individual episodes or something in the meantime. We'll see. Um, could we do the, the chat with Flamekeeper Terrell first? Because that's really the only role play thing that I've got. How about we do that at the beginning of next week? Um, okay. Because I think it'll take more than... We just get into things at the beginning of next week. If we're um, going like, to basically... I think that's more than a... I think that's more than a couple of minutes, though. Um... And I, 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 because I, I just feel like it should deserve a little bit longer than, than a couple of minutes. I'm sorry about that. I, I did want to kind of get that in there, but, uh, and I tried to set it up earlier, but then it was like, nope, got to put that on pause. You put mm-hmm. that on pause to do what I other things. Well, she showed up, and then you walked away from it, basically. So, um, I'm going to put that for the beginning of the next one. We'll, we'll, we'll start with that conversation. Uh, and uh, as, as, as nice as it is to role play a long time, I'm, I'm getting a bit tired. I'm get the end of my, my tether for today, just because I'm tired. Um, but I want to thank everybody who did watch, uh, who sees this either uh, now or later. Um, and like I said, we will bring back another episode next week on uh, Legends of the Drowned Isles. So uh, I need to get my, my closing scene here. Have a great day, folks, and we'll see you again. Doodles. Then.